Welcome to Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll free here. 855-450-FREE is the number. 855-450-3733. Joining you tonight, Ian here. Danica. And Daryl. And join us online over at freetalklive.com. We've got a lot of features that are waiting for you on the site, so go and enjoy. You can get interactive by placing content that you think is interesting right there on our very own front page. Other listeners can then go and vote it up, whether they like or dislike. One of the top stories on the site, as voted by you, is actually an update. It was a guy from V who posted it to the site. And uh, the update is uh, from New Jersey, where you may recall, if you were listening, I think it's probably been a few, several weeks, if not a couple months, uh, from New Jersey, the old guy, the 72-year-old man, Gordon Van Gilder, who was facing criminal charges over a 300-year-old flintlock pistol. You may recall this story. He had uh, pledged to take this to court to go with not guilty and defend his right to have a 300-year-old pistol. Is this the guy that's using the same lawyer that Derek is using for his concealed carry case? Hmm, I don't know if Evan Knappen is involved in this. That's an ex- Yes, Knappen is involved in this case. You're correct. Then I that. have heard about this case. Right. Uh, New Jersey, NJ.com has the story here. Uh, weapons charges against a Maurice River Township man found to be in possession of an antique handgun have been dropped. According to Cumberland County Prosecutor's Office, Gordon Van Gilder, age 72, of Port Elizabeth, had been returning home on November 19th after retrieving a nearly 300-year-old flintlock pistol from a Vineland pawn shop when his vehicle was pulled over by Cumberland County Sheriff's officers in Millville. And if I recall correctly, he had stated that he was being treated very, very poorly by the officers in this case, that they were very rude and, you know, shouting at him, that kind of situation. Cumberland County Prosecutor Jennifer Webb McCray said in a written statement, quote, the public should be forewarned about the prescriptions against possessing a firearm, even an antique in a vehicle. So they're still trying to use this as a teaching moment. To let everybody know that even though they've dropped the charges against this old oh, it's man, so bad. this is a serious matter and you should not be possessing any kind of uh, pistol, let alone one that is 300 years old. So what was the reason that he was actually pulled over in the first place? Um, because obviously the police did not know he had this 300-year-old weapon somewhere in the car. They said the vehicle was acting suspiciously in a known drug area. So he was doing the speed limit and right. observing all other traffic things. And okay. that automatically makes him a suspect. Yeah, I mean, pretty much. I mean, that's well, because the average person will usually speed slightly, right? So if you if you are not speeding at all, then you must be carrying drugs. Right. So if you're doing everything exactly by the book, then that's suspicious, according to them. Notwithstanding, upon careful review of the circumstances of this case, I am exercising prosecutorial discretion to dismiss the unlawful wep- uh, possession of a weapon charges Uh, They put the unlawful part in parentheses, so I don't know if that was actually included in the original quote. Uh, To dismiss the charges in the interest of justice in accordance with the Graves Act governing firearms offenses in New Jersey. Adam Puttergill, age 21, of Maurice River Township, had been operating the vehicle while Van Gilder was a passenger. The sheriff's department says Van Gilder admitted to having the gun, but also stated that the pair were in the area to buy drugs a point that Van Gilter and his legal counsel, Evan Knappen, have denied. A subsequent search of the vehicle resulted in possession of a controlled dangerous substance of a controlled dangerous substance charges against Puttergill from the Sheriff's Department. Van Gilder was arrested November 20th and charges with the alleged weapons, or charged rather, with the alleged weapons offenses. The article actually does say charges, so they got that wrong. Anyway, Knappen, the attorney in this case, who works both in New Jersey and in New Hampshire, he's a Free State Project participant and has, was actually at one time the vice president of the Free State Project. Uh, he says, my client and myself are extremely happy of the news. I would like to commend the prosecutor for dismissing this, although more work needs to be done in Trenton to address the issue. Debate over Van Gilder's arrest has led se- uh, several state lawmakers to look at changes to New Jersey's laws regarding antique firearms. One assemblywoman said that she plans to introduce a bill that would align the state's law with a federal statute that exempts firearms manufactured before 1898. One state senator has called for a bill that would allow a person convicted of unlawful possession 
admittance to pretrial intervention of supervisory treatment if they had no known association with a criminal street gang and no criminal convictions. So the bureaucrats, the elected politicians there in New Jersey are acting like they're going to do something about this, at least these politicians are. Whether or not they'll have any success whatsoever in passing this legislation is another question. I can almost guarantee you that if they do introduce some kind of legislation to exempt firearms manufactured before 1898 or whatever arbitrary date they come up with, you're going to have people show up to the committee hearing saying, if this passes, there will be blood in the, in streets. the streets. Sure. Oh, of course. Children will die. And all of these other horrible, horrible things that you know they always say is going to happen if anything is ever rolled back from being made illegal. Yeah, and this is New Jersey, which is one of the most gun-controlled areas. There are severe restrictions on guns in New Jersey, and I imagine that there will be quite a few people from that ilk coming out, uh, Daryl. It's, it's not as bad here in New Hampshire, where whenever there's some sort of gun legislation, the uh, the hearing rooms are overwhelmed with gun rights supporters. Uh, but I imagine, but in New you Jersey, still have the people from groups like Moms Demand Action, right. of course, and a couple minority. of other. They here. are the minority, but they're still there. Yeah, that's true. And they're still, you know, spouting their lunacy that has been rebutted by every speaker before them and gets rebutted by every speaker after them, but they still believe what they say. Are there any other anti-gun groups in New Hampshire besides that one? Oh, probably. Um, the Moms Group is the biggest one, though. Okay. And I've been at a recent gun hearing, and they were the ones that were there in force. I don't they know. They had about three speakers, I think, and okay. then there was were some the, other group. Didn't they have some teenagers there at one point? Were they with the Moms Group? I, I do not recall any teenagers at a gun hearing. Yeah, I, I know that, well, there were some there at the most recent hearing I was at, but I don't know if they actually spoke. Uh, but sometimes at, like, the drug hearings, they'll trot, trot out the teens from the high school oh, like, drug control group, and, and they'll speak out. I just didn't know. Yeah. I wasn't in the most recent hearing the entire time. I was out making phone calls for business during a good chunk of it, so I don't know who all actually testified at it. Gotcha. But, yeah, there's also a group called Granite State Progress that frequently comes out, and they, of course, are looking to progress towards having a larger state, uh, is the and then they well, what's the uh, New Hampshire Futures is another that's the anti drug group, right? But I, I think they somehow get involved with some of the gun stuff as well, or at least it's the same people. Mm -hmm. They might be representing two different organizations during the various hearings. But I know that I've heard that name brought up during at least one of the gun hearings. So I'm glad to hear that the charges were dropped in this particular case. And I don't know exactly what, uh, you know, the details of the charge that he was facing with this weapons possession charge. Uh, but, you know, maybe they could have gotten a conviction. I, I suspect they dropped the charges because he was an unsympathetic or he was a sympathetic defendant. Right. Uh, 72 year old man. Maybe they felt that there was a chance that they wouldn't be able to win this in front of a jury, especially with Evan Knappen uh, going up against them, because he's sort of known, at least around here, as the go to gun rights attorney. And so this guy had the right attorney and he, of course, was this in a sympathetic position. They that's that's my belief as to why they dropped these charges. That really helps being sympathetic, being, elderly, be, yeah. being seen. No, not just being elderly, well, but being be seen elderly. as a sympathetic figure. Right. So like with the uh, cannabis uh, nullification thing that they had here in New Hampshire a couple years ago, where you had the guy who was a Rastafarian growing cannabis for personal use for religious purposes. No prior history of any you know run-ins with the law at all made him a sympathetic figure correct but he may have been found guilty had it not been for the free state project participant who happened to end up on his jury and who then flipped That's the entire jury towards but he was a also a sympathetic figure that, that made helped. the jury more willing to go with the one I person agree. that was the sure. holdout yeah, no doubt about that the toll-free number here is 855 450 free coming up uh uk teachers Maybe snitching out their students for playing violent video games. More on the way. You can share your thoughts here at 855-450 free. Attention business owners. Do you know the three most critical letters in business? CEO? MBA? Nope. Here's a hint. 
These three little letters can make the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. ROI? The answer is INC, as in incorporation. Because if you're not incorporated and someone sues your business, you can lose it all. Your home, your car, even your life savings. That's why Incorporate.com is now giving away a free incorporation guide to all business owners. So you can incorporate in just 10 minutes. Protect your home. Protect your car. Protect your life savings. Call 1-800-941-1029 for your free 10-minute incorporation guide from Incorporate.com. They don't provide legal or financial advice. They just make incorporating or forming an LLC quick and easy. Get the three little letters that can mean the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. For your free guide, call 1-800-941-1029. That's 1-800-941-1029. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. After briefly reviewing several documents outlining his parents' dire financial circumstances today, 23-year-old Wesleyan University graduate Zach Wallace told reporters he had, quote, absolutely no clue how his mother and father are going to dig themselves out of the $35,000 of student loan debt they incurred to pay for his college education. I mean, this is going to be really hard on my parents. When I was in college, I just assumed that, you know, they would pay off my student loans within a few years of me graduating. But I never realized how expensive college is going to be for them. Wallace, who graduated with a film studies degree in 2012 and has since had two unpaid internships, told reporters that from the way prevailing interest rates are trending, his parents could easily be paying off his debt for the next quarter century. They're going to be paying for the rest of their lives. And on top of it all, they have to help me out with my rent, too. I mean, it sucks. It really, really sucks. This is the Onion News Network. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate. Oof, I think we've all had enough of that jingle, don't you? If you're going to invest in property in New Hampshire, it just makes sense to support a liberty-friendly realtor. Call Mark Warden of Team Porcupine Real Estate for investment property or rentals in the free state. Or visit his website. Come on, you know it. PorcupineRealEstate.com While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Now, more Free Talk Live. You dial in toll-free to bring up whatever you want. 855-450-FREE is the number. That's 855-450-3733. And don't forget, you can join us online over at freetalklive.com. Please enjoy the features that we have waiting for you on the site. Also, you can enjoy Bitcoin. If you've got some Bitcoin, you can send some in the, uh, into the Bitcoin tip jar over at bitcoin.freetalklive.com. And I, at, it's on my short list of things to do, but... I'm pretty excited about the new shapeshift.io website. We talked to Eric Voorhees about it over at the uh, the Bitcoin conference in Austin. 
And one of the things that they're going to allow us to do is actually make it so we can accept all, I mean, all of the major altcoins on Free Talk Live. There's a way to set it up to where uh, essentially you can have people send their altcoins in and they're automatically converted into Bitcoins for us. Nice. Uh, I've been be cool. wanting something like that yeah. to come about for a long time. I'll That's let you know. Cool. Yeah, I'll let you know when I finally get that set up, but it is something you can do with uh, with Shapeshift.io, and I was just kind of scratching the surface into looking into that today. It's a cool website, there's no doubt about it. Uh, but in order to use Shapeshift.io, you already have to have some sort of a cryptocurrency. If you don't yet have cryptocurrency, you can go and get as much of it as you want from the folks over at ExpressCoin.com. They are the best choice for acquiring cryptocurrency. Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, it's fast, safe, easy, and inexpensive. And they are a licensed money services business. You can get your cryptocurrencies with money order, check, or wire transfer. So turn some of those Federal Reserve notes into something that's really useful into Bitcoin. Start off over at ExpressCoin.com. Whether you're in the United States or Canada, it's ExpressCoin.com. And don't forget code FTL. If you're ordering up to $40 worth of cryptocurrency, you will pay no fee whatsoever with code FTL at ExpressCoin.com. Again, that's ExpressCoin.com. Our toll-free number tonight is 855-450-FREE. Uh, coming up, there's uh, lots to talk about, including a man freed from prison after 30 years on death row. Daryl, you've got that story also on the way here tonight. Uh, the disturbing story about the young people in Great Britain. And Danica, you brought this one in from, uh, from Great Britain. It's actually on the front page of our website as well, but the schools are now going to be calling the police on parents who let their kids play violent video games. Yeah, essentially they're going to be eavesdropping on children that talk about violent game, potentially violent games, um, such as Call of, D Call of Duty and Grand Theft Auto. And I know that you play Grand Theft Auto. Yeah. I have too. I'm not much of a Call of Duty person myself. But yes, those games can certainly have violent themes. And Of course they do. Yeah. I mean, games have to have violent themes unless they're a puzzle game. I mean, really... You know, most sports of the, games. That's even that's violent yeah, in a lot of cases. Violent. I mean, boxing, football. I mean, these are violent games. Baseball's not violent. Okay, baseball's not violent. And Unless bowling. you intentionally hit the batter, Can but you, you actually still intentionally crack hit somebody the heads in the sports game. I I don't know if that's I don't play sports games, so I don't know. Uh, that. The last time I played a baseball game, yes, you could intentionally hit a batter. Interesting. Okay. And I know in Grand Theft Auto, you can actually take sports things such as baseball bat and use it to clobber somebody. And that's certainly violence. So the site is from, in or the uh, the website reporting on this, Inquisitor, uh, I-N-Q-U-I-S-I-T-R dot com. That's right. An association of school heads, roughly the equivalent of principals in the United States, one region in one region in England, will call the police on parents who let their kids play violent video games, calling it child neglect. Danica, when did you start playing violent video games? Uh, violent video games? Um, let's see. Well, I guess that would make it in uh, elementary school because I used to I used to play at these places called arcade games, right. um, arcade areas. I'm sure you two know about it, but for those who don't know, arcades, you know, think of the past. And he's played Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat and Gauntlet, of course. It's true. You do have to stop down now and explain what an arcade is for everyone who's under the age of 25 uh, listening to the show. That's true. Yeah. Before uh, there were home gaming systems, a lot of people would go to these arcade centers and they were usually in skating rinks, pizza malls. places. Malls. There you go. Yep. Uh, you would get tokens or quarters, most of the time tokens. Soon we're going to have to explain what a mall was uh, for the kids <laughs> as well. It's not quite to that not, point yet. Not quite, but you would put in quarters and you could play a variety of games from Donkey Kong, if you all remember what Donkey Kong is. Donkey Pat Kong's Gang. very violent. That monkey throws barrels at you. That's right. Yeah, like And he captures the, the little girl, the girl in the story, yeah. and Mario's got to try to rescue her. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can't capture the girl without using violence, right? So there's that. Uh, but yeah, so you started playing in arcades. Yeah, I started playing in arcades. How old were you when you got into? Oh, video probably games? seven or eight. Okay, so you're you're an unusual case then, right? Because I mean, when you were young, getting into video games, it was pretty male dominated, right? Like, yes, were, it was very male dominated. I mean, what were you? I mean, what what did your girlfriends think about your gaming habit? Um, I had a couple that were also into into gaming. They had at they had a Super Nintendo. I didn't have a Super Nintendo, so I would go over there and play all the time. Uh, but I also had a large number of girlfriends that kind of laughed and giggled at it, and they went to go playing 
you know, their very gender specific playtime, which was Barbies, Barbie dolls. Barbies and dressing up yeah. and, and that kind of stuff. So there were a few girls that I was able to get into that. And my sister also played. My dad actually got us Game Boys for our birthday. So we would usually play on those. Mm-hmm. So it was a very small niche for me. So uh, do you feel like you're a worse person today because you've played violent video games in the past? You know, every time I see that head of yours again, I just want to like jump on it and hope that a coin comes <laughs> out. <laughs> no, I know. I I can honestly say video games has probably made me a better person because really? it has taught me a lot of critical thinking skills. Uh, it's taught me a lot of- How do of video fun- games teach critical thinking? Well, look at the puzzles that it presents you. You, know, you have to think about what kind of- pieces that you want to put into the puzzle to advance to the next area. Mm-hmm. Um, you have to think about what kind of weapon you need to use to get yourself thinking? out. Is that critical thinking? Is that the definition of critical thinking? It's teaching you how to think to solve problems, yeah. Ian. Okay. That would be critical thinking. I'd, I'd say that compared to what a lot of thinking is done in the States, it's pretty critical. All right. Fair enough. The toll-free number tonight is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Uh, you know, I can't really remember what the definition of critical thinking is. It just when I think of finding a key card to open a door, that doesn't really, you know, seem too critical, I guess. But not, you have to figure out box. what the thing is that you found. What does it go to? Uh-huh. Like oh, if, yeah. if it's a new video game that you've never played before, you have right. no clue what the game is. You have to figure things out of where does this door go? Oh, don't go through that door anymore because there's some weird monster that will rip your head Maybe off. Maybe there's more to it than I'm really thinking about because I'm so used to video games. There was an episode of React uh, recently, which is a great mm-hmm. YouTube channel. Uh, I don't know if it was on the React channel or the Fine Brothers channel, but they, it's their two channels. And one of them that they did recently was uh, Elders React to... This game uh, called The Last of Us, which is apparently some kind of a zombie apocalypse a, yeah, zombie game. game. And it was the first. So they had the elders, which these are people like usually over the age of 60, uh, playing video games uh, every now and then on this channel. And it's mm-hmm. very entertaining. It's so funny to watch them play a game like a, a Call of Duty oh, or yeah. uh, <laughs> Five Nights at Freddy's. That one's, yeah, that's not really, I don't really consider that much of a game, but it is kind of right, fun to but watch them play. No, watching them react to it. Or the Slender Man game. Oh, that was my Did favorite. Did they play that one, The Elders? I'm not sure if it was The Elders, but I know the kids played it, and it was hysterical. So it was the first time they've ever had The Elders play, like, sort of one of these narrative games, where this game, it's not like, you know, a, it's not a simple game. You're you're running in around in a sort of created world, and a story is being told. And it was interesting watching their reactions. I'll talk a little more about that here in a moment. 855 450 free, and we'll get back into the snitching story as well. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right, General Steel, America's leader in pre engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices a 50 by 100 for $35,000. You heard right, that's 5,000 square feet for $35,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. So call 866-91-STEEL. Lock in your price now. Call 866-91-STEEL. That's 866-917-8335. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. 
Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it. Use it. Spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit Promote.LRN.FM for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.LRN.FM. It's Free Talk Live. You're invited here to dial in toll-free and bring up whatever you want. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. In this life, we use battery power every single day. At least if you're, you know, in the developed world, you're probably using a smartphone. I think like 60% of uh, American adults have a smartphone, and that was probably last year's numbers. So I imagine that will be going up again this year because it went from like 50% to 60%. And that's just smartphone, not cell phone. That's correct. Well, it's the smartphones that really drain the battery. I mean, you could have the old school dumb phones. Those would last for a couple days. You could get through a weekend with a dumb phone. That is right. true. Right. No, my, my point is it's more than 60% of Americans that have a cell phone. It's just 60% That's correct. that have a smartphone. I'm talking to the people that have the smartphones, though, because those are the ones that really drain the battery. It doesn't matter. You know, you can get the extended battery. It's going to be dead before the end of the day if you're using the phone uh, for any decent amount of time. That's very and true. It can be a huge hassle if you're not nearby an outlet to plug into. Uh, uh, the Pocket Power Plus can help you. In fact, not only will it charge your phone uh, multiple times, but it could even, in certain circumstances, jumpstart a car. And when you get the Pocket Power Plus, it comes with a full accessory pack that has pretty much every adapter that you could possibly need, as well as the jumping, uh, the jumper cables. So you can use this to charge up your laptop, your cell phone, multiple times uh, before it finally runs dry. The Pocket Power Plus is a breakthrough in portable power technology. And you can go and learn more about it over at PocketPowerPlus9.com. You get it at half price by going to PocketPowerPlus9.com and use coupon code FTL and you'll save even more. Again, that's PocketPowerPlus9.com. Coupon code FTL. Let's go to Aaron listening in St. George, Utah. Aaron, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian Danica and Daryl. Hey, guys. Hi. Yeah. Um... I was surprised when I heard the response from uh, one of the hosts there. Where they they couldn't believe that video games uh, doesn't present uh, a vehicle to accumulate the critical thinking skills. I was so taken back by that. I wanted to know which one of the the hosts said that. That was me. What uh, uh, Ian Freeman? Well, question that. Do you did you ever play? Did you play much video games when you were younger? Oh yeah. I mean, absolutely. Didn't, you, a... have, didn't you have an Atari? 
I've had the Atari okay. on Nintendo. I mean, I've had, I was an 80s kid, right? So I grew mm -hmm. up with all the yeah, original well, game systems. I mean, systems. that's why I was kind of take, taken back. I thought, gosh, for sure he, he would have played video games when he was a kid. Um, well, I'll admit, I, I don't, I, look, the reason why I said it was because I'm not intimately familiar with the definition of critical thinking. So I've gone ahead and pulled up the Wikipedia uh, definition here, and according to Wikipedia, critical thinking is clear, reasoned thinking that involves involving critique. Its details vary amongst those who define it. According to Bayer, critical thinking means making clear, reasoned judgments. During the process of critical thinking, ideas should be reasoned and well thought out and judged. Uh, the National Council for Excellence in Critical Thinking, didn't know there was one, uh, defines critical thinking as the, quote, intellectually disciplined process of actively and skillfully conceptualizing, applying, analyzing, synthesizing, and or evaluating information gathered from or generated by observation, experience, reflection, reasoning, or communication as a guide to belief and actions. And I guess just, you know, when I think about playing video games and jumping on mushrooms so coins can, you know, come out of bricks eventually, <laughs> uh, that, you know, doesn't necessarily make me think about this is a critical thinking process. Not every video game gives you the opportunity to use critical thinking, but okay. some do. Exactly. And I'll that's, give you that. That's what I was going to say. Like, if, if you have a game like Zelda, you absolutely are going to have opportunity to use crit critical thinking skills. If you have a game like Duck Hunt, old school Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt, you have hand-eye coordination, right? Right, then it's just, you're you just twitching kind of the, at that point. The, the new playing games, which you play within a community on Xbox Live or something like that, mm -hmm. you have Sim you City or you have Halo. You have some of these games where you're playing with other people as teams going after other teams or... Uh, you know, some of these other games in which uh, uh, you're just, you know, you're you're within a society and you can pretty much do whatever you want, including cause all t kinds of havoc, murder cops, or do whatever you want to do in these games. And I was going to present to you guys uh, from a liberty side of things, what if we used uh, a video game platform, uh, such as one of these games in which you live in a society and you can do anything, and to create uh, a real live environment that's liberty oriented in which players across the United States could all get on and 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 demonstrate in a model how liber uh, liberty uh, type society would be built up and would function. Sounds like a boring called, game. I believe it's called Minecraft. <laughs> Second Life. What about Second Life? I've never Second, played Second Life. Life. Mises Institute had a uh, replica of their institute on Second Life. Yeah, we had uh, some listeners build a listening kind of hangout place in Second Life. This was probably a decade ago at this point. Uh, this Second Life's an old game, but I yeah. guess people are still playing it, where it's sort of a sandbox game, and you can go in there and build stuff and talk and hang out and customize your avatar, your little in-game player. So I guess, yeah, I can see, well, certainly I'll agree that some games involve critical thinking. It seemed like the general statement was that video games helped you uh, build critical thinking, and I was in immediately critical of that, saying that, well, you know, there's some games that it's pretty basic and you don't really have I to think I think that too there's hard. a benefit to nearly every any, any kind of video game that's out there. I mean, even something as simple as Angry Birds, because people play Angry Birds and they're able to burn off stress. You, you know, it's definitely a stress killer. Wait, which one's Angry Bird? Is that the one where you throw the bird at the pig or something? You don't throw it. You propel it. You have to bring it back with your finger. <laughs> You're bringing it back in like a big rubber band, a right? Big like a big rubber band. And there's different slingshot. kinds of birds that have different Okay, skills. I think I played that for about 15 seconds, thought it was stupid. You want to play a really stupid game? Try Desert uh, Bus. That's a pretty stupid game. What about the goat simulator? That's a pretty stupid but, game. But I mean, as far as like phone games go, what about Flappy Bird and its sequel, Swing Copters? <laughs> Flappy Bird. No, horrible. I'm right. not a big gamer person. If I'm going to play a video game, You're you like, like to watch games. On you Google like, Maps. You like football, right? Right. If like I'm wrestling. going to play a video game, I want to play like a football game or a wrestling game, mm -hmm. something to where like I get to create a character and then do something I like. Throwing birds at pigs is not <laughs> anything that I'm interested in. Yeah. All right. So, Aaron, anything else you want to share tonight? No, I mean, good conversation. I just, I always battled my parents in society. They told me, video games is worthless. You're burning up too much time there. You're spending this and that. And I can tell you, I learned everything from accounting skills to uh, hand-eye coordination to critical thinking. I, uh, video games, to me, were, were uh, 
a, a very great teacher in my life of many different types of skills. Heck cool. Yeah. Thanks for the call tonight, Aaron. I appreciate it. I yeah. I mean, I I can agree with uh, that. You know, video games are beneficial, but I can also see the other side of the coin that. There is a possibility of going too far. Obviously, right. you know, we've had stories in the past, and I'm sure we will again because mm-hmm. these are fascinating stories of people who, like over in uh, China or um, other places in the sort of the, the Korea. Orient. I, I think Korea is where Korea's one of them, yeah. The, uh, die. Like the video game <laughs> cafes are really big, and people will go and spend like 72 consecutive hours there and yeah. just take naps at the little table. Or they will mm-hmm. perish uh, because they haven't fed themselves. Themselves and or they you will know. kill right. their and children, the, like what happened the, in China. The staffers think that the person's just taking a nap because, oh yeah, he was in here for seventy-two it's hours exhausting. last week. He was here for forty the you know week before. He's just taking a nap, and then people start complaining about, hey, that guy kind of smells funny, and <laughs> then they realize oh. he's peed himself. He's no, dead. that's how they found the one guy yeah. was dead because he started to emit an odor. Well, well, you're right. When you die, you lose control of your bowels, typically, and uh, your bladder. <laughs> so you're going to emit something that's going to emit an odor. Um, but what happened in China? Kids died? Uh, people, parents? Well, a child, okay, a child died. There was a story where a couple was playing World of Warcraft. Uh, I believe it was World of Warcraft. MMORPGs. It may have been evil. It, it was an MMO. Uh, and they were playing it for several hours, maybe even days, and neglected their child, and their child died. So they wow. voluntarily let the child starve to death. Murray Rothbard would approve. The toll-free number tonight is 855-450-FREE. Uh, that's 855-450-3733. But most people don't approve with that, uh, of that, Daryl. You're not agreeing with it, obviously. You're no, just no, I'm not. Making and a that comment. doesn't happen often. You're just making a comment about some uh, political philosopher's opinion about this. 855-450-FREE. I think the average person would be ab- uh, find that abhorrent. More on the way here. This is Free Talk Live. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Pop quiz, kid. You know it's at 3221 Highway 22? The new Dickinson Granger branch. You know it was there before that? Who cares? There's a Granger branch there now. Granger's got everything we need from inventory management to safety services and solutions. They even have this handy mobile app for easy browsing on the go. Let's head over there and stock up. There's nothing I love more than a new Granger branch, kid, including you. Get it? Got it? Good. Call clickgranger.com slash oil and gas or stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. If the IRS has garnished your paycheck or seized money from your bank account, you need to get professional tax help now. Fast action is required to put a halt to these aggressive IRS collection tactics. You can count on the knowledgeable team of tax professionals at Wall & Associates. With over 30 years of experience, Wall & Associates has settled the tax problems of thousands of taxpayers for a small fraction of what they owed. For a free face-to-face consultation, call 1-800-425-4610 to put a wall between you and the IRS. 1-800-425-4610 or look for us on the web at wallandassociates.net. We solve tax problems. If you hire Walland Associates today, you'll never have to talk to the IRS again. To stop the levies and seizures today, take action now. Call Walland Associates at 1-800-425-4610. Wall and Associates. 1-800-425-4610. Based on actual cases, results may vary. Not a solicitation for legal services. Hey guys, Mark Claire here, lionsofliberty.com, where we strive to advance the ideas of liberty daily. We bring you the Morning Roar. That's right, every Monday to Friday, we'll have a brand new edition of the Morning Roar, where we provide a roundup of some news stories that you may not find in the mainstream media or even in your typical social media news feed. We find stories that relate to the ideas of liberty and provide you with our liberty perspective on them. 
Every Monday, we have our longest-running feature, Mondays with Murray, named after the great libertarian Murray Rothbard, where we'll examine an article or an excerpt from his works and help convey his view, along with our little spin as well. We wrap it all up every Friday with Felony Friday, where our own John Odermatt goes out and takes a look at some sort of felony. There's felonies committed every day, you know, whether it's a felony committed by the police, a politician, or even an average citizen. You can find all of this and so much more over at lionsofliberty.com, advancing the ideas of liberty daily. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial on in toll-free here and bring up whatever you'd like. 855-450-FREE. We're talking gaming, though, at the moment, and what sparked the conversation, which has gone off into sort of general gaming related discussion of uh, people gaming too much what people how benefit uh, people can benefit from playing games and how they can you know actually die from playing games too much uh, so there's a whole you know like a lot of things technology is a double-edged sword it can be uh, used for good and it can also go in the wrong direction um, so we've kind of gone off in that direction but you can also bring up anything that you want our toll-free number is 855 450 free the original story that we barely even scratched the surface on is out of the uk where apparently schools will be snitching on students whose parents are allowing them to play violent video games uh, but you can share your thoughts maybe you think video games are a danger and you think that the the violence in these games is causing children to warp their minds and go insane our toll-free number 855-450 free join us on skype as well skype username is lrn.fm so we'll be happy to take your calls about that or anything that might happen to be on your mind also don't forget you can help support free talk live by becoming a free talk live amplifier over at amp.freetalklive.com amp stands for advertise market and promote and the idea is you send five bucks a month to free talk live we invest that into the show using it to market our program to more radio stations to get on more stations around the country that uh, therefore we can then spread the ideas of freedom, liberty, and if that's worth five bucks a month to you, you get perks too, like access to the Facebook group that's only for amplifiers. Uh, there's the Amp Only Forum, Amp Only Podcast. There's some perks involved for you. So go to amp.freetalklive.com to learn more and please get signed up there for five bucks a month with any major credit card. And also, uh, we take Visa and MasterCard directly on the site. So you can use PayPal with any major card or Visa or MasterCard. And coming soon, Bitcoin. I know people have been asking for it for a long time. And with our upcoming website redesign, we are expecting to be able to implement that. So in the meantime, you can do credit cards over at amp.freetalklive.com. That's A-M-P, amp. I did not even notice that you didn't uh, use Bitcoin to pay for the amp. Well, we did. Um, the reason why we haven't is because up until Coinbase came out with an option that allows for recurring payments, oh, there right. was no way to do a recurring payment. So you could always, we always had the Bitcoin tip jar ever since we've accepted Bitcoin. So you can go to bitcoin.freetalklive.com and you can toss some Bitcoin in the Bitcoin tip jar. Uh, but ultimately, the AMP program has been separated from that because AMP is about a monthly contribution. That's right. Yeah. Uh, to qualify as a Free Talk Live amplifier, you have to sign up for a monthly contribution, a one-time. We will we'll accept a one-time contribution, and I'll be very grateful for you sending it. Uh, but it doesn't qualify you as an amplifier. It would amplifier. not qualify for them. Okay. Right? So yeah. the idea behind the AMP program is there are certain ongoing costs 
that we have with marketing this program, and those costs come in monthly or yearly, right? So sure. we have them regularly. So it's easier to be able to budget for something when we know, oh, well, we've got this many people who are giving us this much okay. per month, uh, rather than just sort of randomly accepting one-time contributions from folks. So thank you in advance for doing that. That's amp.freetalklive.com. All right, so uh, well, let's get into the story here a little bit deeper from the UK's Inquisitor.com. The Nantwich Education Partnership, which oversees a handful of schools in Cheshire County. Hey, we're in Cheshire County, uh, New Hampshire. Hey, check that so out. Apparently, this is the original Cheshire County in England, sent a letter to parents warning them that if school officials overhear kids talking about playing Call of Duty, Grand Theft Auto, or a similar violent video game, the police will be called. From the note, apparently, that went home with parents... Quote, if your child is allowed to have inappropriate access to any game or associated product that is desi- designated 18 plus, we are advised to contact the police and children's social care as it is neglectful. Oh, a bunch of rubbish. So not only are they going to call the police, but they're going to call the equivalent of CPS, the uh, child beneficial, whatever they want to call themselves over in the UK, which, of course, we all know is a group that tends to destroy families and tear kids apart from their parents oh, yeah. over the slightest of offenses, which apparently now includes playing a game intended for people under the age of 18. Horrible. And this is where things go, right? Like in the United States, uh, it's not this bad yet, but there are gaming stores who will refuse to sell a video game that is designated as a mature title, Uh, Here in the United States, they have a a gaming rating system that was voluntarily brought on by the gaming companies. I'm putting voluntarily in air quotes because the reason why they brought this gaming rating system out was because the government was threatening them to do it for them. This was back in the early 1990s with Mortal Kombat and Night Trap. Yep. Uh, were a couple of the games that that essentially led to this happening. It was actually Joe Biden who was leading the charge back then against these violent video games. And then it was the industry that said, all right, all right, all right, well, well, we'll do it. We'll, we'll come up with something. So they put together the, I think they call it the ESRB rating system. Yeah, the ESRB. And I have a couple of friends that do work at these gaming companies, at GameStop to be specific, mm-hmm. and... You know, I've been in the store with them and you would not, you know, you would not believe the age of kids that come up and just expect to purchase this 18 plus. And he tells them, you know, hey, I'm sorry, I can't sell this to you. And the kid gets all whiny and then he gets his mom and his mom asks, OK, well, why is it 18 plus? And my friend will say, OK, well, this is what's going on in the game. And then she either just may not care and purchase it either mm-hmm. way or be shocked and scold her kid i mean it just you know there's definitely two sides to it i mean on one hand i'm thinking to myself okay these kids are probably what elementary junior high they probably should not be playing 18 plus games oh why but, not but you know again it's up it's the up to parent, the parent yeah right? the parent doesn't have a problem with it well then you know there's you know why does the nanny state have to get involved it's just it's ridiculous well i mean it's not the nanny state right it's GameStop. that's their policy mm-hmm. and I can understand why they have the policy. The policy is there because they probably got too many complaints from parents. They probably did. So there's probably too many parents who came in saying, hey, you sold my son this violent game and we don't don't allow that stuff in my house and shame on you. And so there's there's enough parents who are complaining about this. uh, They're going to do something. And so they've implemented a policy where they will check ID of people. But it starts to get ridiculous when you know the person starts to get older right like when the person is 17 or 18 or 19 you know they're in that range where obviously they you know they can make their own decisions for themselves and they probably witnessed something of the matter at that point anyway what do you mean something of the matter i mean they probably witnessed like a very heated debate between their parents that you may you may not be considered violent but they've exposed you know they've been exposed to you know yelling they've been exposed to some kinds of violence either in movies or other kind of media that is just kind of like hey they've already seen this before what's well, one movies more year? is one thing but video games yeah. it, it's it's because of those video games that the crusades happened you know <laughs> yes because they they had ataris in the middle ages well, who knew so um, what I wanted to say, though, was that the GameStop, I had a one of my ex-girlfriends, she went in there and 
she was in her early 20s at this point, and they asked her for her ID in order to buy a video game. Mm-hmm. And I think she rightfully walked, I think she walked out of the store at that point and said, screw this, you know, I'll just, I'll buy it on Amazon. They're not going to ask me for an ID. Yep. And so there's there's some back, you know, back splatter, if you will, from that particular policy where, yeah, they did it to make the parents happy, but now... Now this, they've made some other group of people Yeah, upset. now they've, they've become kind of this, this nanny state. I mean, without necessarily mm-hmm. that being their intention, they're, they're just trying to protect their sales, and they know if they upset too many moms and dads, that's going to hurt their sales. But now they're upsetting, you know, some of their uh, average younger customers, and I imagine people in their early 20s are a fairly large chunk of the customer base at these stores. But then again, maybe, you know, it's not so offensive to the average person. Maybe the the average person is so used to being carded for a variety of different things and getting carded at the gaming stores like no big deal. And maybe it's only the 1% of libertarians, or I guess amongst gamers, libertarians are probably a higher percentage. But, you know, maybe it's the 10% of uh, customers that are libertarians that are irked, but, you know, not so irked to where they're not willing to actually make the purchase. I think more more people are excited about being carded because, ooh, I don't look, you know, I definitely look younger. Yay! That's probably what they're thinking about i get annoyed when i get asked for an id yeah even when it's somewhere that i know i'm going to get asked for an id like when i go to the credit union because my credit union's still in alabama so i go to the one here that's the shared branch and i have to show it to them it's just annoying having to pull the id out and hand it to them and then they always get the confused. Oh, where's the expiration date on this oh, one? I lo- yeah. Right. Love oh, yeah. It. I love how the expiration date matters. I mean, look, why does it even matter if the ID is expired? Is that my picture? Is that my birth date? Do you need to know how old I am? Or do you need to know if this is a valid ID, meaning that the government has said that it's still okay to accept it? Because that's all the expiration date is. Right. But they've got a little filled on their screen oh, yeah. that they have to put in. Well, they can also be busted for it, too, right? Like right. if somebody gives an ID that's got, that that ex- is expired, uh, they, they could get in trouble. Right. 855-450 freeze the toll-free number. Your thoughts on gaming and this new snitch policy where teachers will be turning in their students if they overhear them talking about violent video games. You can share your thoughts with us here on Free Talk Live. Hour 2 is coming up. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine freedom scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read chapter one at SurvivorMax.com. In a trial by jury, the primary function of a juror is not to dispense punishment to the accused. It is to protect your fellow citizens from being unjustly deprived of their life, liberty, or property. As a juror, you can say no to unjust laws and prevent government abuses of power by refusing to convict. Legislative. Executive. Judicial. The fourth branch of government is we the people. Find out more from the Fully Informed Jury Association at FIJA.org. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine freedom scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read chapter one at SurvivorMax.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. 
From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, April 3rd, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.78 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,200 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $254. Antiwar.com reports a groundbreaking framework agreement yesterday between the international community and Iran has caused most to breathe a sigh of relief as it seemingly forestalls the calls for hawks non-stop for decades to attack Iran. But has the war been prevented? Not necessarily. Israeli officials griping about the deal even before it was made have dialed up that criticism more and having failed to sabotage the negotiations through lobbying the US Congress, they may look to veto the deal by starting a war and assuming everyone will back them. Israeli intelligence minister Yuval Steinitz is talking up that option in particular, saying Israel may have no choice but to use the military option to counter the threat of the deal. Steinitz bragged that the 1981 Israeli attack on a nuclear reactor in Iraq was done entirely without U.S. permission or cooperation, saying U.S. efforts at diplomacy would not have stopped an Israeli war. Even the U.S. is not immune to that sort of warmongering talk with Defense Secretary Ash Carter declaring just days ago that the U.S. could sign a final deal with Iran and then attack them anyhow if it thought it would benefit them. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports a Texas Department of Public Safety trooper said he was reprimanded for posing for a picture with Snoop Dogg that was posted on the rapper's Instagram. Ty Clevenger, an attorney for DPS trooper Billy Spears, said Snoop Dogg asked to take a photo with his client while he was working security at the South by Southwest Music Festival in Austin. The rapper then posted the picture on Instagram with the caption, Me and my deputy dog. Clevenger said DPS superiors reprimanded Spears and ordered him to receive counsel after the photo, which was taken by the rapper's publicist, was brought to their attention. The DPS order read, While working a secondary employment job, Trooper Spears took a photo with a public figure who has a well-known criminal background, including numerous drug charges. The public figure posted the photo on social media, and it reflects poorly on the agency. Clevenger said his client has no means of appealing because the counseling does not constitute formal discipline by the agency. However, he said the reprimand will appear on Spears' personal personnel record. The lawyer also said Spears was unaware that Snoop Dogg had drug convictions. You can support FPP Radio by shopping online. Whether you're looking for t-shirts, precious metals, bitcoins, or books, you'll find that and more at shop.fppradio.com. There's an Amazon shopping iframe built into the website, or you can shop directly from FPP with Bitcoin in the Bitcoin store. Every purchase you make from one of my affiliates at shop.fppradio.com helps fund FPP Radio. That's shop.fppradio.com. Reuters reports Brent oil fell nearly 4% on Thursday after a preliminary pact between Iran and global powers on Tehran's nuclear program, even as officials set talks in June and analysts questioned when the OPEC members will be allowed to export more crude. Traders had been fixated on the talks held in Switzerland for a week as Iran tried to agree with six world powers on concessions to its nuclear program to remove U.S.-led sanctions that have halved its oil exports. The sanctions against Iran will come off under a future comprehensive deal to be agreed by June 30th after it complies with nuclear-related provisions. Phil Flynn, analyst at Price Futures Group in Chicago, said, If nothing is going to be signed until June, something could go wrong between now and then. North Sea Brent Crude Futures, the most widely used global benchmark for oil, settled down $2.15 or 3.8% at $54.95 a barrel. U.S. Crude Futures settled down $0.95 cents or 2% at $49.14 a barrel after falling $2 earlier in the day. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com.
In addition to creating a Twitter account, Pope Benedict XVI plans to further connect with Christian youth by giving up on Catholicism. Quote, in order to really relate to modern teens, he needs to make religion a much smaller part of his busy life, just like they do. And it's already working. Tweets like, can someone go to church for me, LOL, hashtag sleeping in, have been retweeted over a million times by lazy Catholic teens, while tweets like, if God was real, how come there's so much murder, and I'm still Catholic, I just don't go to church or believe in Jesus, have been especially successful with college students who are questioning the church's teaching. It's really cool to see that the Pope is as active on social media and as skeptical about God as I am. Look, he just tweeted, I'm not religious, I'm spiritual. That's totally how I feel. Pope Benedict's aides say his next project involves reaching out to Muslims by sitting down with Islamic leaders and proclaiming his undying allegiance to Allah. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You are invited to join us here toll free. Bring up whatever you want. 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. The Snitch Society continues to develop in, uh, in a very undesirable manner. With now, students will be snitched upon by their teachers and other school staff, presumably also other students. Uh, when they're overheard discussing playing violent video games. With you in studio tonight, Ian here. Danica. And Daryl. Danica, you brought this story in, and also it was, I believe, submitted right to the front page of our website by Matt John 76 You can participate on the front page over at freetalklive.com as well. Submit whatever you want. Vote on the stuff you like. Vote down what you don't. And we'll have some clue of what you think is important. Of course, the best way to get your thoughts on the air is to call in toll-free or to reach us via Skype. You can Skype into the show at username lrn.fm. So apparently there was a note that was sent home to parents, more of like a warning letter, a threat, that uh, told them essentially if, they, if their kids are heard talking about playing violent video games, that the police will be called, as well as what is called ch Children's Social Care, which is the equivalent of the Department of Children and Families or CPS or whatever it's called in your state. The letter also warned against letting kids have access to certain social media apps such as Facebook. Oh, no. Or WhatsApp, saying that kids exposed to such things could be targets for grooming by sexual predators. What? That... That doesn't even make sense. What do you mean? Why not? There's sexual predators on Facebook, right? There's probably sexual predators everywhere, but to say that, you know, if you're on Facebook that you're somehow going to be groomed to be a sexual predator No, or... no, no. You would be groomed by the sexual predator. Okay, th to that be his victim still doesn't make any or her sense. Victim. Like that, there's more chance of you know having some sexual predator pick you up walking around at the mall than there is. Is that true, you Daryl? So? How many times have I told you to not go with the man in the van? I've <laughs> never gone with the man in the van. Oh, okay. But he has a puppy, and he needs help finding it. And he has candy. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Like, Look, I don't if know. you've lost a puppy, put flyers up. Now, all I don't over know. Town. I mean, Daryl, are you just speculating, or is there actually some sort of study that shows? I, that I am speculating right. here. I mean, right. So, just to clarify, you're speculating that you believe that a child or a young person is in greater danger of being picked up by a pervert at the mall versus on Facebook, or right? Even because just high school. On Facebook, you can block people. You can't block people at the mall. I would That's love to true. see that happen. I'm blocking you. Go away. I'm blocking you. <laughs> the note from the school said, quote, access to these games or to some social media sites such as those above increases early sexualized behaviors, sometimes harmful, in children and leaves them vulnerable to grooming for sexual exploitation or extreme violence, unquote. The move to call the police on parents who let their kids play violent video games comes as England is reeling from a series of high-profile sex abuse cases involving children. In response, Prime Minister David Cameron's government announced that social workers and teachers who fail to report concerns about children being abused or neglected could face up to five years in prison. 
all for playing violent video games. No, 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 no. You missed that. Uh, this is teachers and social workers, so government workers who fail to report oh, concerns. They, oh, they're failing to report it. Not <sighs> failing to report actual abuse or failing failing to report you know evidence of abuse, but just any concern that they have now. Failing to report that is going to be a criminally punishable uh, crime in the UK. This is a really scary idea. The idea that if you don't report, if you, you know, see something, say something, that if you don't say something, that that is in itself a criminal act. That's really scary. It's going to incredibly increase the level of snitching going on in the the UK uh, society. And don't think for a moment this can't come here. Oh, yeah, I totally agree. And I'm fact, surprised there's not already a policy somewhere in the U.S. I suspect there is, uh, and I suspect that you know it may be in a place like, and I'm speculating a little bit here, but like there are certain places like New York City where you know if you snitch out somebody for having a gun, they'll give you cash. You know, there's like a cash reward, and that's a different incentive, right? That's re- that's incentivizing someone with a positive benefit to snitch on someone. But now you're seeing incentivizing a negative, ben- uh, you know, the, the, the lack of uh, harm, essentially. Like, we won't hurt you if you snitch. And that's like, that's the ultimate level of the snitch society, or at least one of the, the higher levels of I, I'm curious how they're going to go about prosecuting this. Like, are, are they just going to prosecute everybody that was in contact with the person and well. then, you know, let the jury figure out who's guilty. Or they're going to make teachers have to report at least one incident per day just to make sure that they're... That they're paying attention. That they're paying attention, that they're sensing. That's scary. That is, that is scary to think about. Yeah, that, that is an excellent point, Danica, is like what kind of craziness would this lead to where if, it, you know, maybe it's not one per day, but maybe they will have a certain expectation that as a teacher, look, you've got 30 kids in this class, odds are good, five one of, of them are... Playing? Well, Something. not necessarily video games, but, you know, odds are good a few of them are getting beaten by their parents or some are playing violent video games or, or whatever. And so shouldn't shouldn't you be reporting at least one person a month or, you know, maybe it'll start at, at one person per quarter or whatever. Just look, we don't want we just want you to tell us who you're concerned with so we can conduct an investigation. Otherwise, we'll investigate you, Ms. Teacher. We'll come and investigate you and ask you, you know, what look, are we you fa- hiding? Right. Well, or or that we found little Johnny. Turns out uh, his parents were abusing him or he's been playing violent video games. Did you see anything that might have led you to believe that this was happening? And then the teacher being an honest sort, but they hadn't reported it. They might say, well, yeah, I did notice that he had a, a you know, a, ga- a, a halo uh, folder that he brought into school. Cause, you know, oh, sometimes man. They- yeah. Because you. You're probably right. They probably the trapper keeper bring bring that kind of stuff into school. I mean, I have you know video game stuff, and I have a Legend of Zelda Triforce wallet, and someone could look at that and be like, "Oh, That's she evidence. plays a, she plays a violent game. She a sword she uses there. her mind to solve puzzles. Arrest her." Yeah, I mean, this seems ridiculous and silly, but uh, by all evidence, this is actually happening. You can share your thoughts with us toll free at 855 450 free. Uh, so, again, there have been some sex abuse cases involving children, but I'd like to point out that at least one of those cases was the Jimmy Saville case. And uh, that was happening over a period of decades since before the advent of video games, where this television promoter, this, you know, essentially Johnny Carson esque person from the UK, uh, this guy was abusing physically children and adults, adults up to their 40s, children as young as seven or eight. Uh, physically, sexually abusing them while he had access to them in a hospital. And he had the access to them because he was a generous donor of that hospital, and they basically would let him go into people's rooms and whatever. And all of those seven-year-olds had Facebook, even though it's in violation of Facebook terms of service for anyone under 13 to use Facebook. Well, there's that. But no, I mean, this was happening over decades, Daryl. So this was prior to all of this abuse yeah, this was prior ha- to the existence of Facebook. Yeah, that particular that particular incident that you're talking about started, uh, what, in the late 90s, I want to say? And- With Jimmy Savile? No, it was going on for decades. Oh, OK. So earlier than that. He died, I think, in um, I don't remember when when he died, but uh, he was in very ill health during the aughts. And so this was going on from like the 60s, 70s, oh, 80s. Oh, geez. OK. Yeah. 
Uh, he had allegedly abused something upwards of 60 people. At least there were at least that many reports over that many years, and and many of those folks uh, essentially, you know, were ignored when they made their reports because the hospital staff at the upper levels were essentially saying, "Oh, Jimmy Savo would never. He would never do something. How d- how could you possibly?" That's absolutely shh, rubbish. Shh. Don't you say that about Jimmy Saville, you know? So there was like a kind of this campaign of protecting him uh, because, you know, he's a big donor. Don't want to question that too too far. So uh, that's one example of some of the sex abuse cases involving children. It's not clear as to why the Nantwich Education Partnership felt that the best way to abide by those new guidelines was to eavesdrop on children on the playground and then call the police on their parents if they mentioned violent video games. Mary Jones, who helped write the letter, says to the BBC News that parents need to have some boundaries in place for what they allow their kids to do online. Let's talk more about the boundaries here in a moment. 855-450-FREE. Are you a parent, and how do you feel about this? It's Free Talk Live. I have a 70-pound Royal Standard Poodle. Her name is Zelia. And three years ago, Zelia's ears were a mess. She would have sticky, gooey, smelly discharge in her ears. We took Zelia to the vet seven times of $150 every time. The vet offered no success at all. My wife and I are driving, and we hear some people on the radio saying D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E. 859-428-1000. The omega-3 fatty acids. Flaxseed, zinc, alfalfa. The digestive enzymes that are cooked out of regular dog food. Six days after I started feeding her Dinovite, my dog's ear problems were cured. My dog no longer yelps. She can be petted without pain, and it's because Dinovite made our dog healthy again. 859-428-1000. 859-428-1000. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power. A gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call 1-800-686-2237 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. 
I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll free. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. So I just, uh, within the last hour, uh, I did what I was talking about doing uh, with Shapeshift.io, which is the new site that Eric Voorhees, who was a longtime listener of Free Talk Live, he's now a major player in the Bitcoin industry, he launched this site, Shapeshift.io, silently. Uh, he did not reveal that he was the person who was behind it until just a few weeks ago. And he has now revealed that information, and he came on Free Talk Live over uh, last weekend to talk about this new site. And I have to say that of all the things I heard about at the Austin, Texas Bitcoin conference, Shapeshift.io is one of my favorites. It was probably, the, to me, the most important thing that they have going there. And what it allows you to do is, with no account whatsoever, you do not have to create an account. You cannot create an account uh, on Shapeshift.io. You just tell it. What altcoin, what you know, non Bitcoin currency like Litecoin or Darkcoin or Shape Can you do Dogecoin yet? Uh, Doge is, I'm certain Doge yes. is in there. Sweet. Yeah, Dogecoin's in there, Feathercoin, Namecoin, Peercoin. There's two dozen altcoins, two dozen of the most popular because there's hundreds of altcoins. Oh, yeah, that's the, very intricate. That's the, awesome. Right. The two dozen most popular. You tell it what you have and you tell it to what you want to convert that. So let's say you want to convert Litecoin into Bitcoin. You can do that. Or maybe you want to convert uh, Peercoin into Novacoin or NXT into Bitcoin, whatever. You select what you want to convert from and to, and then it makes this connection. You deposit uh, whatever coin you want to convert from, and then it spits it out as whatever you want to convert it to. The only limit on the system is that there is a deposit limit. So uh, that I guess they set that deposit limit based on some fraction of what they have in reserve as far as, you know, because they're actually oh, using course. their own yeah. stock of coinage oh, wow. to, uh, to change this out with. So what we've done now, what I've done in just the last hour, uh, essentially during the, the news breaks, was I uh, I set this up. So if you go to bitcoin.freetalklive.com, it used to say Bitcoin tip jar at the top. That's still there. But below that, it used to say Litecoin tip jar. I've now gotten rid of the Litecoin tip jar. Litecoin, you know, it's cool and all, but it was sort of the first alternative that really kind of hit it big, if you will, in comparison to in Bitcoin. In comparison to Bitcoin, yeah. And by big, I mean a small fraction of what Bitcoin <laughs> is. And Litecoin isn't number two anymore, from what I understand. There have been a couple of other altcoins that have been competitive with it. And it's just, it's too much of a hassle to have 50 different addresses on this page. That's why, you know, other people would say, hey, I've got some NXT I'd like to send you. And I'd like, well, you know, I don't want to have all these different addresses on the page. That's just confusing. And so now they've really made it easy, and it literally took me a few moments to get this set up. So if you go to Bitcoin, cool. yeah, if you go to Bitcoin.freetalklive.com and you scroll down past the Bitcoin tip jar, you'll see the altcoin tip jar. You click the button that says "Pay with altcoins," and then you select the altcoin of your choice, whatever it is you have that you would like to send. You got Dogecoin, you got Litecoin, you got uh, two dozen others here. You select that, you put in, uh, you, uh, I guess it will give you an address to which. Uh, you have to submit that coinage, and then it'll come out on my end as Bitcoin. So I don't even have to deal with the Dogecoin and these other alternatives. So it gives people who have these alternative coins a way to donate them to Free Talk Live and makes it so I don't have to deal with having an account at some exchange. Like, okay, I just got a Dogecoin donation. Great. Now I need to convert that to Bitcoin. I don't have to go through any of those steps now. It's all done automatically. That's very cool. cool. Very cool. So check that out over at bitcoin.freetalklive.com. Just scroll down to the altcoin chip tip jar and try it out. Uh, please. We appreciate that. So our toll-free number here tonight is 855-450-FREE. 
We're talking about the story from the Inquisitor over in the UK saying that the Nantwich Education Partnership has sent home a letter to parents basically saying their children and they and their families are under threat because if their uh, their kids are heard talking about violent video games at school, that the police will be called. Not only will they call the police, they may also call the Department of Children and Families or whatever the equivalent is of that over there. They call it children's social care because they consider you allowing your kids to have access to violent video games as neglectful. The bureaucrat, one of the bureaucrats involved here uh, is quoted, Margaret Morrissey, saying that, uh, or excuse me, no, that's not Margaret Morrissey. Mary Hennessy Jones, I apologize to Margaret Morrissey. Mary Hennessy Jones, who helped write this threatening letter, told the BBC News that parents need to have some boundaries in place for what they allow their kids to do online. And violent video games are outside of those boundaries. She says, quote, We are trying to help parents keep their children as safe as possible in this digital era. It's so easy for children to end up in the wrong place and parents find it helpful to have some very clear guidelines. Yeah, just why don't you just go ahead and just stick your hand to absolutely everything, why don't you? This is pretty scary stuff here. I mean, the state is essentially telling parents now, if you let kids play violent video games, you are out of bounds and something will happen to I you. I really hope that there's some parents that compensate. Hey, you don't tell us how we're raising our children. Back off. I really hope that there's And some if sort you of let protest. the kids play outside and if you Feed the kids uh, pizza. things with sugar, pizza, etc. Basically, anything you do, you're a bad parent is what it's coming down to. No matter what you do. Well, if you don't do it their prescribed way, then you're a bad parent. Which is basically anything that you do. I'm sure. If, they- if you keep the kids inside, then you're a bad parent because they're not getting fresh air. If you let the kids play outside, then you're a bad parent because they could get run over by a car or hit by things falling from the sky or they could get abducted or any of these other you know long list of horrible things could happen. Basically, it's coming to the point to where no matter what you do, you're a bad parent. Yeah, it's a scary, uh, scary concept. I mean, the idea that anyone knows the right way to raise kids uh, is ridiculous. I mean, I, I, I don't have kids. I don't have children. I, I'm not interested in having them. Uh, but, I, you know, that doesn't mean that we can't have opinions. In fact, uh, Daryl, you do have uh, a son, from what yes. I understand. And uh, Danica, I don't think you No, have I any. don't have children. So, you know, I don't think that just because I don't have kids doesn't mean I don't have any opinion. I can't have an opinion about it. I mean, I was raised, I was a kid at one time. And one thing that seems to be shared among the parents that I know is that They don't all agree on how to be a parent. They don't all agree on the best way to do parenting. There's all manner of different books and theories and, you know, approaches. There's peaceful parenting. There's using violence against, you know, in your home, like spanking. There's homeschooling, you know, public schooling, how you decide you want your kids to be taught or taken in some sort of curriculum. There's several different ways. I know my mom and my sister-in-law are constantly going through debates and you know, this is something that my mom has tried to stay out of but too often my mom will try and help out my sister-in-law with how she's raising her kids my sister-in-law has to tell her hey these are my kids they're not yours i this is how i feel is right to raise them. and they it's, don't agree yeah and they did they don't agree there's definitely you know a lot of headbutting back and forth and, and you're well, how correct. terrible would it be for one of those two sides to be able to wield the power of the state to force parents uh into their particular model of good parenting Sure. I mean, there's some parents who, uh, you know, they live at nudist camps. Obviously, a lot of people look at that as a weird thing, but that's their prerogative. That's their lifestyle. Who am I to say that that's the wrong way to uh, to raise kids? 855 450 free. Some people would say having religion is the wrong way to raise kids. Others would say that having religion is the right way to raise kids. What do you think? This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. 
General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right, General Steel, America's leader in pre engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices a 50 by 100 for $35,000. You heard right, that's 5,000 square feet for $35,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. So call 866-91-STEEL. Lock in your price now. Call 866-91-STEEL. That's 866-917-8335. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. Ross Ulbricht was convicted in early 2015 of running the infamous Silk Road Underground Market. The Silk Road was a gift to humanity and helped reduce the harms brought on by drug prohibition. For this good deed, Ross may be spending the rest of his life in prison. His family is planning to appeal his conviction, but they need your support. Please visit freeross.org, where you can contribute via various methods, including Bitcoin. Ross needs your help now more than ever. Visit freeross.org. That's freeross.org. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Are you making sense to the boomer mindset? I'm Holland Cook from survivalspeech.com. 80 million baby boomers comprise 25% of the population and control most of the USA's wealth. As aging parents pass on, they'll control more. Boomers are 46 to 65 years old and regard themselves as midlife. They identify as neither young nor old. They're post minivan and pre retirement. And and they don't like being called boomers. They think me. Many of the purchases boomer couples make are individual purposes. They've been experimenters all their lives. If you want their attention, tell stories and keep it simple. If something seems complicated, boomers can dismiss it as, I don't need this. And if you're looking for work, you may be applying to a boomer, so relate accordingly. From survivalspeech.com, I'm Holland Cook. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. Now more with Free Talk Live. You may dial in toll-free to bring up anything you want at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. If you're in the U.K., in Cheshire County, uh, of that way, there's a school group that is now threatening parents. They are going to report on their kids, report on the parents as neglectful parents, if they overhear your kids saying anything at all about violent video games. And knowing young teenage boys, or younger, I guess, you know, there's uh, you know, young boys, uh, they're going to be talking about the games they're playing. They're going to be excited. Oh, of course. Yeah, excitedly discussing the uh, you know the new monsters or uh, bosses or whatever it is you know the the multiplayer, the online multiplayer, the death matches uh, that they've been involved in. 
But now that could get them in a lot of trouble. It could even, uh, you know, if they're calling social services, which is what they're saying they're going to do, that could end up breaking up the family at this point. So uh, beware if you're in the UK. And I think people elsewhere should beware, too, because it's not it's not unfathomable that this policy could come to a school near you. Also, I want to let you know about Cameron Hughes Wine, and uh, you can go to chwine.com to learn more about Cameron Hughes. What what does he do? Well, he goes to some of the best vineyards out there, and he essentially buys their extra stock because, you know, whenever they make a batch of wine, there's just more than they can possibly sell through their normal channels. And so if they've made too much, they're going to look for uh, for ways to get rid of that uh, that extra product. And what Cameron does is he buys that product and then he he relabels the wine because he can't use the, the vineyard's name on the wine, even though that's where it came from, because obviously that would undercut the vineyard's own prices. So Cameron's actually selling the same wine, the same product, at a fraction of the cost. Basically, you can get $70 to $100 bottles of wine for $15 to $25, and, uh, or maybe even less. So you can go to chwine.com, see it for yourself. Basically, what you see is the type of the wine and then the lot number. And that's the only information you get. So if you like that particular type and you like that lot, you can order more from that lot. Uh, but you know, you never know the actual source of as far as which vineyard uh, it came from. Our listeners have been raving, by the way, about their experiences so far with chwine.com because they've taken advantage of an amazing offer, which is free shipping. Wine's heavy. You got to pack this stuff carefully. You don't want it to break, obviously, in shipping. No one wants the wine to break uh, in shipping. That's a tragedy in itself. Yeah, I mean, it's it's bad for UPS or FedEx or whoever it is that's delivering it, and it's you know bad for you as the buyer and the company as well. So they, they're free shipping, which is expensive shipping normally. Free shipping when you use code FTL. Plus, you get a special offer of 20% off many of their best wines right now if you go to chwine.com. How do you get this deal? You click the microphone. It's in the top left-hand corner, and enter the letters FTL like Free Talk Live. That gets you the deals, the 20% off on select wines, and free shipping no matter what you order there at chwine.com. Code FTL, by the way, that is a limited time offer on the free shipping, so don't delay I on definitely that. recommend the triage. It's $12, and it was very, very good. Yeah, there were a lot of people raving about that at our little wine tasting, which, from what I understand, we're going to be doing another we're one. We, but we shouldn't talk one. about that yet. We don't know what oh, uh, we, don't we don't know what flavors they're going to send us. Uh, so, looking forward to it. Anyway, wine flavors. Yes, uh, and then that's all I care about. Chwine.com code FTL for the free shipping. All right, so we've been discussing in uh, in details how really disturbing the story is out of the UK that they're going to be snitching on uh, children who are playing violent video games or who are evidencing that they're playing violent video games by virtue of the fact they're talking about it in class or talking about it at the playground. So if they say that they're going to be snitching on any kid that's going to be talking about potentially violent video games, and they've they've listed Call of Duty and Grand, Grand Theft, Theft Auto. Auto as two of them, which I, I've agreed that there's definitely some violent instances in those games, but... I wonder if they're going to be. Oh, that's what those games are all about. <laughs> sure, but I, I wonder if it if it gets down to the nitty gritty about this, are they going to be paying close attention to games that have a rating of M or whatever the equivalent is in the UK, or are they? Is it just going to be about any game that could potentially be fined? As I said, The Legend of Zelda uh, is typically rated E for everybody. It's a yeah, fairly. It's a, good question. it's a fairly fairly innocent game, but there are you know you do have to fight you're monsters. monsters. You're killing monsters. You, you, know, you kill monsters, but you're not seeing your screen light up with blood and all of these other gory things. And, well, I mean, there's 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 play blood in in some things. Not very, in Zelda though. Like uh, really I've never played a Zelda game with blood. Are they putting blood in it now? Well, okay, so you're you're probably correct about that. Not in the not in the earlier you're ones not for sure. Pulling but out someone's in entrails. Not no, even, no, no, not no, even in right. the later it's, ones. Danica. It's not not that not that violent. Just may, there might be like little spatches here and there on the ground. I'm just in saying, Zelda. I've never seen it. I mean, Nintendo. Nintendo back in the 1990s, uh, they were very, very afraid right. to have any they, kind of blood they, whatsoever. Nintendo does have a very good family, family-centric 
games. But they, but I they did. have they have matured as far as the content they'll accept. You can now buy violent video games, and you have been able to buy violent video. My games My question is: is that are Nintendo they just going to be looking at any kind of game and say, "Oh yeah, this one definitely has violence in it"? Because no, oh, I, you're killing monsters. I or think is it just ones, for M and above. The ones that are marked violence. So, like, you know, that's a good question. Yeah, a boxing game, you're hitting people, but it's not necessarily going to be listed as being a violent video game. Now, if it's Mortal Kombat, where you're pulling someone's spine out of their <laughs> body, that would be a violent fighting game. So, I mean, how do you feel, uh, Daryl, about, you know, being a parent and allowing kids to have access to mature content games? Now, when you say kids, are you talking about anyone Seven, under the age old. of 18? No. I mean, I don't consider uh, teenagers to be children. I am talking about I, let's I talk know about you children. don't. Yeah, let's talk but about children. But the way governments look at you're things, and I'm guessing on this, they're talking about you know children, quote unquote children, up to the age of 18. Mm-hmm. So let's talk I, about children. Let's talk about actual, not puberty yet, children. Seven, eight, nine years old, that range. Seven, eight, nine years old? No, I don't think they should be playing violent video games. Really? Why? Oh, well, one, I don't think children that young should be really playing video games. At all. If it's something that's purely educational, then okay. <laughs> You're a lame parent, man. Oh my goodness! What about you, Danica? What do you think? <laughs> uh, that that's that's very funny. I <laughs> wait. Why is that funny? It's just I I did not expect that to come out of Daryl Smith. So I'm kind of. I'm, I was a little surprised I, by it I, too. I, yeah. I was a little, I was shocked by that. I think that I mean kids should play video games, and if if they like them, of course, I don't see how there's intentionally wrong. I did say earlier that I think it's a little weird and maybe bad to have kids under a certain age play games like Grand Theft Auto, Call of Duty. But again, it's completely up to the parents. Why is it if weird? they're Well, okay. You know, six-year-old Johnny should probably not be exposed to prostitutes at that age. <laughs> but, you know, if a parent has that problem, it's just kind of like, okay, well, you know, then don't be surprised if your kid starts cussing at you then. I mean, there's things that could happen. I don't like know. I, I'm still of the mindset that children should be playing outside. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's an argument for that, no doubt. But um, that's it, why you only have an hour of video games, and then they have to go play outside. Yeah, you can earn your video game. You can time, earn right? your video game, and there's tons of ways that they can get around that. Kids are going to want to play games, um, and if you tell them they can't, they're just going to go to their friend's house and do it, right? I mean, that's. I remember I there were friends I had uh, that had restrictions on what they could watch on television and that kind of thing. And you just go over to other people's houses where their parents are less restrictive and then you can watch whatever movie you want. Oh, yeah. I didn't have a Super Nintendo growing up. My friend had one, and you can bet I was over there a lot playing on the Super Nintendo. So so you would basically tell um, your son you can't play any video games until when? No, I didn't say he couldn't play them. I just said I don't think he should. I think there are other things that children should be doing. So you would try to dissuade him, but ultimately you'd respect his decision to play video games? Well, I, I also have not had custody of my son in We're several talking about years. In theory, that if you so did. Let, let me think about it, right. and I'll, right. I'll That's a fair answer. answer in That's the a fair next answer. break. 855 450 free, 855 450 3733. You can take control of the airwaves here. I remember my parents, you know, they didn't really have violent, violent video games back when I was seven or eight years old, but I remember my parents let me watch violent movies at that time. Mm-hmm, mine too. I turned out okay. At least some would argue. <laughs> it's Free Talk Live. On Monday, Josh Liebarger made his status Case of the Mondays Followed by a frowny face It got one like and five comments, including Dislike Well, Josh, Geico also wants to make a comment To turn that emoji's frown upside down In just 15 minutes, you could save hundreds of dollars on your car insurance By switching to Geico With all that extra dough, why not give Monday a makeover? We see an office party in your future Hosted by you Hashtag happy face Hashtag savings Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust, who will never betray you, or cooperate with the NSA? 
stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. Hi, this is Steve Sanchez, and based on a recent study, it was found that 57 million Americans had legal issues over the last 12 months, but only 60% of those studied sought out the services of a lawyer. Why? In a nutshell, affordability. While well, my friends at Legal Shield have created a solution that can help you not if, but when you need an attorney. For as little as $17 per month, Legal Shield will provide you unlimited access to qualified attorneys at an accomplished law firm for advice and counsel on legal issues no matter how serious or trivial. For over 40 years and with 1.4 million families across North America, Legal Shield can help you, the loyal GCN listener. Representatives are standing by now to answer your questions, so call them now at 1-855-340-SAVE. That's 1-855-340-7283 or visit them at lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com. Results will vary from case to case. Free Talk Live. Some people ask me, need laws to know what the, what the hell they do. I don't think <laughs> that's true. No, no, I have to disagree with you. There's only one law that people need to know, and that is do no harm. As long as you aren't hurting other people or stealing their stuff or damaging their property, then you are being law-abiding, because that's the one great natural law, as far as I'm concerned. That's what, in fact, when they say, well, you know how they love to say this in court, ignorance of the law is no excuse? Well, that, <laughs> oh, that phrase came about when that was the law, when that was pretty much the only concept you had to get, was that you don't hurt other people. Get it? Mm. Ignorance yeah. of that law, there's no excuse to ignore that law. That's That makes sense. But to say that ignorance of all these uh, tomes and tomes and tomes of legislation that we have out there, that there's no excuse for that, of course there's an excuse. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. LRN.FM needs your help getting our satellite signal back on in Africa. Our satellite provider had us on at no charge from 2012 through February of this year when they pulled the channel off the air. Now we're trying to raise $22,000 to continue reaching people with the message of liberty in places where it's needed most. Please visit our Indiegogo fundraiser at africa.lrn.fm. Give what you can and share the link with your friends. africa.lrn.fm. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, take control of the airwaves here, toll free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online over at freetalklive.com. Like the show? Want to help support Free Talk Live? Shop with us. You can go and get your shopping done at shop.freetalklive.com. Enter Amazon through the links you'll find there. Amazon Canada, Amazon UK, and Amazon uh, US. You just click on the right one for you. Free Talk Live gets a cut of the sale when you enter through shop.freetalklive.com. Of course, buying violent video games in the UK may become more and more difficult over time. It seems like there are certain elements within the government there who are looking to crack down on young people, children, uh, and probably teenagers as well, from playing these games. They are being told to, uh, teachers at schools are being told to report on their wards, the uh, the young people in their classes, if they overhear them talking about violent video games, Grand Theft Auto specifically mentioned, Call of Duty, these are some of the more popular games, but if any evidence is uh, shown during class, or on the playground about kids playing violent games, they will be instructed to snitch them out. But further, and even scary, uh, more scarily, if teachers are found to have not reported concerns 
uh, there's been an announcement by Prime Minister David Cameron saying that if they have not reported concerns about children being abused or neglected, and they're considering violent video games as neglect in this school district, that they that those bureaucrats could face up to five years in prison, which means that even if, as a teacher, let's say, uh, let's say you're a teacher in one of these schools, and you don't really care if your kids are playing violent video games, that to you, you don't believe that's a problem, you know, you're familiar with games, you're comfortable with them, you know these kids are comfortable with the games, and you just believe that it's okay. Well, if it's found out that some of the kids in that class are playing violent video games and it comes out that you had, as a teacher, some knowledge of this and you did not report on them, you could face five years in prison. That is going to take the teacher who otherwise would butt out, who otherwise would look the other way, who otherwise, in my opinion, would do the right thing and stay out of their stay out of what's not their business and give them the crazy incentive of punishment in prison to really get interested in other people's business. So do you think you'll see some teachers wind up quitting instead of having to deal with this? I don't know. I guess it would depend on if they actually start enforcing that policy. Again, it's a it's a theory right now that there has been an announcement that they could face these charges. Have any of them faced those charges yet? I have not heard about that. Right. Uh, if you're in the UK, you can let us know. I guess once it becomes real to them that this is more than just a memo, uh, that that may be the time when they decide to leave. But yeah, it's legit. Let's go to Wesley. He's in Bradenton, Florida, listening to WSRQ. Hello, Wesley. Hey. Hey, you're on the air. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, I just wanted to comment on the uh, whole video game issue. Um, I play a lot of video games. I play, you know, the two, you know, most notable for the violence, the uh, Call of Duty and uh, Grand Theft Auto Five. And I I enjoy those games. And I'd have to say that. I find this is a possible stepping stone to gaining more control over people that um, even even with some of the nonviolent video games, as as uh, you mentioned earlier about, you know, The Legend of Zelda, um, you know, you know, some some people could still find that as well. You know, you swing a sword at something or you play as Captain America. Captain America punches bad guys and, you know, in the face. And yeah, even that's, if they're, that's true. If they're other other humans. So. That's just, you know, even though it, you know, most of the games are cartoony, um, it is, you know, a stepping stone to say, oh, well, you know, this kid enjoys punching people in the face as Captain America. Video game. Um, I think what needs to happen instead of, you know, creating Uh-oh. more regulation is that there needs to be better education on the rating system. You know, these games are rated. They're rated, you know, M for mature. I work in a I work in retail. I can't sell games to minors if it says M for mature. Do you work at GameStop? The is present. Uh no. What's the retailer you know, that you I work, work for? A, uh, I work at Walmart. Oh, Walmart's carding people. I didn't know that. Oh wow. What yeah. is what's the rule? Yeah. Is it if the person looks under twenty five as like as a clerk, what's the rule that you have to judge by? Um well oh. Really, I mean, it kind of goes by, you know, you know, for 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 alcohol, it's 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 one thing. If they look under forty, we ask card them. Right. Um, but you know, it you know, we we get kids that come in and say, you know, that that look like they're teenagers. Anybody that looks, you know, that looks young, I mean, we have the card. Even even you know, if they're with a kid, I mean, you don't. But I'm I mean, sorry, like you, you're you look, saying, if it's you know, under 40 for alcohol, they have to card. Is there a certain age or is it just someone who's young? Because, I mean, if it's somebody who's 17, they can look an adult. Uh, 16, you know, can look adult. Uh, yeah, so. yeah. Well, we still, yeah, we still generally card, you know, even if they look like, you know, they're 20 or something. Okay. You know? Gotcha. Okay. Wow. Yeah, we, My you guess know, is probably if you look that, under you know, 25. Because you, you can never be safe. Because if you, you know, you do that and then all of a sudden, you know, a parent comes in and is like, oh, well, you know, you sold this game to my kid. Mm. Um do you get people who are you upset know, about that? Do, do or has anyone ever balked at you? Like, hey, you know, how dare you uh, card me for this and then walked out? No, I haven't had that problem yet. I mean, I there there, there are people that yes, they will do that. Um, you know, because I mean, there, how young there, is too young? Different. Is there is there an age at which uh, it is too young to play Grand Theft Auto Five? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I'd say if I'd say if you're a minor, you, I mean, you shouldn't. You shouldn't be playing that game. If once you're a you're, minor. So you think anyone under 18 should not be playing Grand Theft Auto? 
No, but they do. You right, can't do. be I serious. Mean, I mean, you really believe? I mean, how old were you when you played your first violent video game? Um, I was probably 12. And you believe you should not have been able to play violent video games in your early teenage years? No. I mean, I, the, once my dad found, once my dad found out, he came in and, you know, I, and I didn't realize, you know, I, and I mean, part of it is I didn't really realize, you know, what I was, you know, what I was doing. What do you mean by um, that? How and, did you, what, grand did, theft, well, what does that mean? I'm you sorry? don't realize what you were doing. Did you not realize it was fake? That it was a game? No, I realized it was a game, then but I mean, not, what did you not realize? Well, what was the video game? But, but the, oh, it was, it was it was Grand Theft Auto. I think it was two. Uh -huh. Okay, so the earlier Grand Theft Autos. What, what is, so when you say you didn't and, realize what you were Grand doing, Theft what do you mean? Auto, Grand Theft Auto has evolved over the years into a into a much more mature game versus the eagle eye oh so when uh, it was shooter. when you were old yeah. enough or when you were that young it was a different game yeah, and so therefore eagle, it was okay eagle eye shooter basically ridiculous you top down and it was just you know it was pistols, as violent you know, of a game across. it just you know was a different perspective the hardware couldn't handle i mean the fundamentals of oh, grand theft auto were all there you could shoot people and run them down you, and, know, you couldn't <laughs> you couldn't brutalize the people like you can today there's so much more involved in fact um, but yeah, you believe you shouldn't have been allowed to play that game. You agree with your dad punishing you. Yeah, but that was my dad's decision to make. Nobody made that for him. Nobody forced him to make that decision. That was his. That was his role as a parent. Should you video know, that games was, that was... come equipped with retinal scanners that scan <laughs> the retina, and if it's determined that the user is under a certain age, they can't activate the game? No, this is this is something that that needs to be left up. This is something that needs to be left up to the parent. Okay, that's what good. I'm saying is I think I think it's a good. I what I'm saying is people need to be more educated on the rating system. Mm -hmm. Anybody that's ever really concerned as a parent that see you know sees these games, they they ask me, well, what what's in this game? Well, why well, is it rated turn M? Turn the box mature? over. You can read that. Um, and, look, and, but I still and, don't and understand what you were saying though when you said you didn't know what you were doing at age 12 playing Grand Theft Auto 2. What does that mean? Well, I mean, it's just that, you know, I just ran around and, you know, I just ran around and did stuff. I didn't really, didn't really, see, you know, it didn't seem like anything that would, you know, badly influence anybody. Do you feel like it did you know? badly influence you? Because I agree with you. It's just a game. No, I don't, I don't feel that it badly influenced me. But you believe that, that today's that Grand Theft Auto could badly influence someone? Quite possibly. I mean, there, there's even... But why? Like, in Grand Theft why is it so much better when it, you it played the games? I mean, look, man, when I was a young person, and, you know, this was a couple decades ago in the mid-1990s, I was playing a game called Doom, and uh, before that it was Wolfenstein oh, 3D. Yeah, does that make you I, a bad I person? I played Doom, too. No. All right. Well, thanks for the call, Wesley. I appreciate hearing from you. It's it's that old. Uh, well, it was okay when I did it, kids. But now, oh, these you know, this marijuana is worse now than it's ever been, or these video games are worse now than they've ever been. But you know, violent video games have been pretty ever present in popular culture for. A I think solid it's just more. You may have been trying to say it's more realistic in GTA Five than it was in GTA Two because GTA I understand 2, what have, he was saying yeah. there, but I think it's ridiculous because you are still engaging in acts of violence to computer sure, characters absolutely. is the argument that because the the game's characters look more realistic that it's somehow damaging to children who believes that i know there are people who believe it i want to hear from you at 855 450 free when the leading antihistamine and nasacort go nose to nose nasacort wins stopping more of the chemical responses that can cause your nasal allergy symptoms and when you stop more causes, you get 24-hour relief from sneezing, an itchy runny nose, even congestion. It's prescription strength medicine available over the counter. Nasacort Allergy 24-hour. Stops more of what makes you miserable. Use as directed. Indefinite extension of the human lifespan is coming. But is it coming soon enough for you and me? That's the $80,000 question. I say $80,000 because that's what it costs to have your head cryonically frozen by Alcor. I've committed to do it. I got a life insurance policy, and I made them the uh, beneficiaries. Bam. 
My best shot at living forever. Interested? Contact them at alcor.org. A-L-C-O-R dot O-R-G. Mention my name and I get a free year of membership. Are you tired of your taxes funding endless occupations around the world? Antiwar.com is run by people who understand that wars abroad become wars at home, wars on our freedoms. Antiwar.com is dedicated to bringing you the latest in news, views, interviews, and reviews from the top movers and shakers in the anti-occupation movement. Antiwar.com has it all, from thorough foreign policy analysis to interviews with whistleblowers who used to run the military-industrial complex. Antiwar, pro-free market. That's Antiwar.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, April 3rd, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.78 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,200 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $254. Antiwar.com reports a groundbreaking framework agreement yesterday between the international community and Iran has caused most to breathe a sigh of relief as it seemingly forestalls the calls for hawks non-stop for decades to attack Iran. But has the war been prevented? Not necessarily. Israeli officials griping about the deal even before it was made have dialed up that criticism more and having failed to sabotage the negotiations through lobbying the US Congress, they may look to veto the deal by starting a war and assuming everyone will back them. Israeli intelligence minister Yuval Steinitz is talking up that option in particular, saying Israel may have no choice but to use the military option to counter the threat of the deal. Steinitz bragged that the 1981 Israeli attack on a nuclear reactor in Iraq was done entirely without U.S. permission or cooperation, saying U.S. efforts at diplomacy would not have stopped an Israeli war. Even the U.S. is not immune to that sort of warmongering talk with Defense Secretary Ash Carter declaring just days ago that the U.S. could sign a final deal with Iran and then attack them anyhow if it thought it would benefit them. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports a Texas Department of Public Safety trooper said he was reprimanded for posing for a picture with Snoop Dogg that was posted on the rapper's Instagram. Ty Clevenger, an attorney for DPS trooper Billy Spears, said Snoop Dogg asked to take a photo with his client while he was working security at the South by Southwest Music Festival in Austin. The rapper then posted the picture on Instagram with the caption, Me and my deputy dog. Clevenger said DPS superiors reprimanded Spears and ordered him to receive counsel after the photo, which was taken by the rapper's publicist, was brought to their attention. The DPS order read, While working a secondary employment job, Trooper Spears took a photo with a public figure who has a well-known criminal background, including numerous drug charges. The public figure posted the photo on social media, and it reflects poorly on the agency. Clevenger said his client has no means of appealing because the counseling does not constitute formal discipline by the agency. However, he said the reprimand will appear on Spears' personal personnel record. The lawyer also said Spears was unaware that Snoop Dogg had drug convictions. 
You can support FPP Radio by shopping online. Whether you're looking for t-shirts, precious metals, bitcoins, or books, you'll find that and more at shop.fppradio.com. There's an Amazon shopping iframe built into the website, or you can shop directly from FPP with Bitcoin in the Bitcoin store. Every purchase you make from one of my affiliates at shop.fppradio.com helps fund FPP Radio. That's shop.fppradio.com. Reuters reports Brent oil fell nearly 4% on Thursday after a preliminary pact between Iran and Global Powers on Tehran's nuclear program, even as officials set talks in June and analysts questioned when the OPEC members will be allowed to export more crude. Traders had been fixated on the talks held in Switzerland for a week as Iran tried to agree with six world powers on concessions to its nuclear program to remove U.S.-led sanctions that have halved its oil exports. The sanctions against Iran will come off under a future comprehensive deal to be agreed by June 30th after it complies with nuclear-related provisions. Phil Flynn, analyst at Price Futures Group in Chicago, said, If nothing is going to be signed until June, something could go wrong between now and then. North Sea Brent crude futures, the most widely used global benchmark for oil, settled down $2.15 or 3.8% at $54.95 a barrel. U.S. crude futures settled down $0.95 cents or 2% at $49.14 a barrel after falling $2 earlier in the day. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. This is the Onion Week in Review. According to friends, colleagues, and complete strangers, anxiety-ridden man Timothy Gibula is rightly ashamed of every single thing he does, with mere acquaintances saying they're constantly judging Gibula at every moment, just as he suspects. Tim's the kind of guy who's forever second-guessing his behavior, as if everyone's constantly scrutinizing him, and he's completely correct. We all are. We can spend entire afternoons picking apart Tim's taste in clothing and his receding hairline. It's honestly all we do when he's not around. Anytime he uh, awkwardly says excuse me when He's waiting in line for milk or sugar. Uh, anytime he fails to make eye contact with me when he asks me for the Wi-Fi password. Not only do I notice these things, but I use them to judge him fundamentally as a human being. A three-alarm fire that tore through a family home in Newark, Delaware early Saturday morning tragically claimed a half sleeve of Oreo cookies that were trapped inside a cupboard. At the time of the blaze, the residence was occupied by Mike and Sheila Donlan, their three young children, and six delicious chocolate sandwich cookies, all half dozen of which perished in the intense heat and towering flames. Back with more Free Talk Live. You can dial on in toll free here at 855 450 free. Bring up whatever is on your mind. 855 450 3733. You can join us online over at freetalklive.com. Enjoy the features that we have waiting for you there. Uh, once again, freetalklive.com. With you in studio tonight, you've got Ian, Danica, and Daryl. And so you can comment on whatever you darn well please. We've talked about uh, violent video games and the uh, situation in the UK, where if uh, young people, at least in some parts of the UK, if young people are overheard discussing their playing of violent video games, staff at some schools have been instructed to turn them into the police, as well as uh, the Department of Children and Families or whatever the equivalent of that is over there. You're welcome to share your thoughts on that, especially if you're somebody who feels like young people should not be able to play uh, violent video games. We just had a caller, for those of you just tuning in, guy called from Bradenton, Florida. He works at Walmart, and he says they, like at GameStop, also have this uh, policy where they have to ID somebody who wants to buy a mature labeled video game. And he said that he thought that when he was younger, it was okay for him to play Grand Theft Auto Part 2, but now that the Grand Theft Auto series is more realistic than it was back then, that now it's inappropriate for young people to be able to play these games. I don't think I've ever played Grand Theft Auto. Really? Ever. Oh, wow. I can hook you up with you if you want to give it a try sometime. You it's- really should, Daryl. I think it would really like totally be a, a stress reliever for you. <laughs> It's one of the most popular games out there, and you know, usually not always does popular mean good, but in the case of Grand Theft Auto, it's definitely a very, very well-produced game. Uh, it's, it's sort of an open sandbox game where you can follow a plot line if you like, and the plot line is well-developed. There's uh, 
you know, characters that are memorable and, you know, they have their voice acted by, in some cases, some, I guess, some name actors, I suppose. There's lots of side quests and there's lots of really cool cars that you can customize. Yeah. So one of the basics of Grand Theft Auto is uh, jacking cars from people. You can literally walk up to any car that is not going in a quick manner and essentially stop the car and uh, force the person out and, <laughs> and then drive it around. And they don't... Uh, they don't have any licenses, meaning that what I mean by that is they have not licensed the models of the cars that they're using. So the names of all the cars are different, but they look exactly like what they really are. So Fords and Hondas and things like that. They're in the game, but they're all called so something So a Ferrari else. would be called like a Ferrari? Something like that, yeah. They're not as obvious of uh, ripoffs, but uh, the, you know the cars themselves are designed right down to what they actually look like and supposedly handle like uh, in real life. So there's actually a lot of drive that goes on in the game, and there's a lot of shooting uh, that goes on in the game as well. Okay, so tell me more about the customizing the vehicles. So, like, could I just take vehicles and just customize them the entire game and like that would be the game for me um you could i mean if you had the money you'd have to get money and so in order to get the money you'll probably have to go on some crime style uh excursions what about a job like can your little guy get a job <laughs> can he get a you job? can actually this isn't dri- Sims. you can actually drive a taxi <laughs> yes that is true so you, you can, can drive earn money a taxi. that way there are non-criminal ways to uh, to earn money in the game but uh, i don't know how quickly you'd be able to rack it up driving the uh, the taxi around uh, there was also a tow truck driving that you could drive. There in the is most tow recent truck driving. Version. All right, yeah. so hold on. So what if you're a taxi and then you just stick up all of the people that get in your taxi? I don't know if you, because know. it's not Uber. There's not going to be a rating system That's that right. says don't get in the car with that guy. He's going to rob you. Well, I could imagine you could do just about whatever you wanted in Grand Theft Auto. Well, that is part of the game. Is that it is this open sandbox environment to where. You can just go and jack any car and beat anybody up, but you know if you do too much too soon, they're going to send the police against you. If you you know if you beat some one guy, yeah, there's up, a radar that goes up, but like yeah. depending on your risk, if it's all the top, oh, you've got helicopters coming after you. Yeah, you've got so, SWAT teams. So, I, I saw the elders react video where they this? were playing Grand Theft Auto. Was it funny or what? It was hilarious. Oh yeah. Well, okay, that actually brings me back around to what I was going to talk about before, where the elders were reacting to. Uh, this sort of narrative style game. So a game like Grand Theft Auto is really cool because it's sort of free range, meaning that they start you in the game, there's a little bit of plot to kind of get you get you rolling, and then you can totally just not follow the plot at all. You can just go wherever you want to do, you know, wherever you want to go and pretty much do whatever you want to do. Um, if you follow the plot, then, you know, different things sort of unlock as the game progresses. But the game they were playing in this recent Elders React was a game like a zombie game. And this game is, is, is much more sort of on rails, for lack of a better term. You, you know, there's only one way out of the level. You can't okay. go in any direction you want to. Like, if you try to go one way, the guy, you know, the bad guys will kill you. That kind of There's certain ways that they've programmed the game to where... It's linear. Yeah, almost. very, very linear. That's the right word for it. Where they want to tell a story. And that's really all the game is. It's just interactive portions of storytelling, essentially. You, you play this role of this character... Uh, and the, the game players are sort of revealing the story as, as time goes on. It's not as much of a game in the same way that uh, Grand Theft Auto is. It's more of a cinematic experience, just sort of through the, the, the demeanor of having a, a video game to present that. And so they were having the elders react to this style of game, which they've never had them do. They've had them play a first-person shooter. They've had them play Grand Theft Auto, which is hilarious watching the elders play these games. And in this case... They were all really taken in by the storytelling aspect of this. One lady said that uh, it was her favorite game she's ever played because it actually had a story. Maybe it was one of the guys. Anyway, one of the char- one of the elders said this, and so they made some really appropriate observations about the sort of the style of game. But it was funny because there's so little interaction in certain parts of these games. When the game started, you know, it starts with sort of a cinematic of the setup of what's happening in this game, and then eventually. After like a few minutes of this, the character you, that you're playing is just sort of standing there. And it's funny watching the elders who've never played a game like this before. They're like, why is she just standing there? The the dad is running away. She's put, like the zombies are attacking, right? And it's like <laughs> she's just standing there. Why is she not listening to her dad and like following her? They couldn't understand that, oh, this is the part where you actually control the game. This is the part where you are actually the character and you move. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> almost every one of the elders just sort of sat and they were waiting for something else to happen on screen. They didn't understand. They never even had played a game like this. So it's always fun to watch them uh, interact in these uh, these games. I don't even remember why I was telling that, that story. That it, It's been more than an hour since I touched on it in the beginning, but I highly recommend the Elders React series on YouTube. Yeah, the React channel, I love it. It's always good. I mean, there's uh, whether it's the kids react or the teens react or the elders react or the YouTubers because they they've okay got too. YouTube stars that react to things. Yeah, they're that's a little more like uh, that. That one's a little more hit or miss. Favorites. Yeah, but it, it's still good. But one thing that I think is interesting is half of those people that are stars, mm-hmm. I have I no clue who they, who they are. Other than, oh, I've seen them on these React, the React videos channel. before. I can pick out a lot of the YouTube stars, and then, I, then I'll then i see someone that I haven't seen in years. And I'm like, oh, wow, they're still a thing. <laughs> uh, I can pick out about four of them. Uh, Lindsay Sterling. Uh, Don't know her. Of course you would know who Lindsay Sterling well, is. One of the guys from Pentatonix I recognize. I couldn't tell you what his name is. And then Rhett and Link. Okay. But you don't know who Michelle Fawn is. Who? Yeah, okay. Nobody uh, knows who these people. Are. Of course. <laughs> I guess I shouldn't say nobody knows who they all. They all have their followings, right? But they've all got like millions of subscribers yeah. on their YouTube channels, and like that's their job is making YouTube. And videos. And I think that's awesome. Um, outside of their followers, though, I can't imagine that they're too well known, right? Like they. Oh, have and their... Roman Atwood was in one of these react the things. Yeah, I've yeah seen the prankster there. was in one couple Which, days ago you know side uh side note uh roman atwood the prankster i think he i think it's either he or vitaly they're one of the like the top two prank channels on youtube i guess uh roman knows Adamo freeman from copblock.org interesting so i think wow. it, i think it, uh, hopefully we'll see at some point a collaboration video between uh, i've heard Adamo. some talk about something about a collaboration video uh i i didn't know it was going to be a collaboration video okay but I heard Ademo talking about a project oh, that, would be cool. that involved pranking, and I and the cannot, cops. I cannot say what it is. Pranking the cops, but it's are going the best to be hilarious. Prank videos on YouTube. Whenever they prank cops, those are always my favorites. Toll free number tonight: eight fifty five four fifty free. Coming up. All right, we're going to get to a serious issue here, uh, Daryl. You've got a man who's been set free after 30 years on death row. Yes. And we'll talk about that story. You can, of course, bring up anything that you want here on Free Talk Live, 855-450-FREE. Plus, there's good news, a little bit of good news in the Zen Magnets uh, court case. 855-450-FREE. This is Free Talk Live. Here's a special message for those of you who owe the IRS at least 10000 or more in back taxes. The IRS has special programs in place that could eliminate or reduce your tax debt by thousands of dollars. Call the tax helpline that has been set up to help you. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. Stop the wage garnishments, levies, and tax liens now. Once you've qualified and enrolled, the IRS will stop all the collection activities against you. These unique programs have been allocated to help the economy and significantly reduce or eliminate your tax burden. The IRS is currently accepting reduced settlements and other favorable programs. You may qualify for substantial savings, so get the help you need. For free information and to see if you qualify, take down the number now for the Tax Representation Hotline. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. 800 691 6129. Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm, this time warns of Greek style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt to GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American, covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237 and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. Hi, I'm Derek J. 
I don't want a politician to represent me. To me, government is the idea that one group of people can coerce everyone to comply with an edict or face increasing punishments up to and including death. Despite perhaps the most noble of intentions, the best government services are a far cry from what could be provided for by voluntary interactions. Besides, the people who call themselves the government wage wars and put peaceful people in jail for crimes involving no victims. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 9938 you can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Dial in toll free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And you can join us online at freetalklive.com. Lots of features on our site. We give them all away. When you're online, however, you need to protect yourself. You can't trust your internet service provider to do it. In fact, they're probably violating your privacy by saving all of your search history and all the websites that you visit and creating a log that in some cases can be as long as five years in length. Uh, so you can stop that sort of prying and spying from happening. You can also prevent people from sniffing out your Wi-Fi packets and trying to steal passwords that way, for instance, by using ProXPN. It can solve these problems for you. ProXPN.com slash FTL is where you can go to download their app. It's available for pretty much everything, Windows, Macintosh, iOS, Android, even Linux. You grab the app and get connected to ProXPN. You, there's actually a free account. You can get started with that. And when you're ready to upgrade to their premium account, you'll get unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world that you can access. You can privately torrent, get past regionally blocked websites. You can do it all for less than 5 bucks a month with our discount code FTL50. That 50 stands for 50% off the price of the annual account. So just go to ProXPN.com slash FTL. Grab the software. When you're ready to upgrade, use code FTL50. You get a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee and a great discount on privacy that is priceless. It's ProXPN.com slash FTL, promo code FTL50. Daryl, tell me about a guy who was in prison for 30 years, now released. So the story here comes from USA Today. A 58-year-old Alabama man who spent more than half his life on death row walks free, and this happened today, Good Friday, after prosecutors determined that he did not fire the gun that killed two fast food managers during 1980 or yeah 1985 robberies. Anthony Ray Hinton said outside of the Jefferson County Jail, I should not have sat on death row for 30 years. He was there awaiting a retrial after the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that his original lawyer did not adequately defend him. He said all they had Let to do... Let me guess, do, a government lawyer? I, I don't know. I suspect. Uh, he said all they had to do was test the gun. He said the state had every intention of executing him for something he oh, wow. did not do. And it took them almost 30 years to figure that out? Yes. This is, in the last, I would say, two months, this is the third story I've heard of people being on death row oh, for agree. 
30 or more years. Mm-hmm. There was the one guy that was released in December after being on death row for 39 years. I think there was a woman that was in Arizona, maybe, that was also just released because... There was the Ohio man that was recently released after 30 years. This guy, 30 years. Hmm. Uh, he called it a miscarriage of justice, not only for him, but for the victim's families. He says, I will continue to pray for you as I have for 30 years. The primary evidence police used to link him to the killings were bullets at two crime scenes. But earlier this week, prosecutors said modern ballistics tests proved they did not come from the 38 caliber Smith & Wesson revolver found in Hinton's home or even the same type of gun. The charges were then dropped. His new attorney who is the director of the Alabama-based Equal Justice Initiative, said he was convicted because he was poor. Pretty much. Uh, The new attorney, Brian Stevenson, took the case 16 years ago. Oh, my God. And said that the state refused his appeals to retest the gun. Stevenson said, his case, in my judgment, is a case study in what's wrong with our system. We have a system that's compromised by racial bias, and his case proves it. Hinton was convicted of the February 25th, 1985 slaying of John Davidson, an assistant manager at Miss Winner's Chicken and Biscuit in Birmingham, who was shot twice in the head inside a walk-in cooler. He was also found guilty of the July 2nd, 1985 killing of Thomas Vason, an assistant manager at a Captain D's who was likewise shot in the head inside the cooler. Hinton Mm. was sentenced to death in 1987. Jason Davidson says that he does not believe that Hinton's release proves that he did not kill his father. Davidson wrote in an email that was published on AL.com, This is a difficult time for my family, and at this time, the only thing I have to say is God will have the ultimate decision if he's guilty or not. So the family member— I see it as murder, or rather, I see it as a murderer being set free today. Wow. So even though they found that the actual evidence, they've managed to somehow test this gun, and I'm not not clear on exactly what— They they did ballistics Mm tests and found that the bullets did not come from a thirty-eight. Uh, what what was this? A thirty-eight caliber Smith and Wesson, and it did not even come from a thirty-eight caliber at all, which is what this guy had. Right, he had a thirty-eight caliber Smith and Wesson revolver in his house when he was arrested, and these bullets did not come from that gun that he had or any gun that was a thirty-eight caliber. And but yet this family member still believes that so this guy now was the, murderer. the son is still saying that as far as I'm concerned, a murderer was released from jail today. Wow. I mean, it takes a pretty serious F up to reverse a conviction. Right. I mean, there's a yes. lot of people who are on uh, in jail saying they didn't do it. And most of them will end up staying in for their entire sentence or dying in jail. Um, but it's very rare that this happens. It's not to say that those people also didn't do it. I mean, who knows? The big question here is, if this guy's innocent, how many others who are on death row are also innocent? Well, Which there's is- already been hundreds hundreds that have been released since the late 70s when the death penalty was reinstated. Mm-hmm. And there have been thousands that have been executed And based on the number that have been released versus the number that have been executed, it's been somewhere around 10%, I think, of people that were on death row have been exonerated from death row. Right. Those who Mm -hmm. have managed to have the people on the outside spending the, what was it, 16 years this one attorney's been handling in this case? Spending the years upon years and all the time and the money and the effort to try to get these convictions overturned. They don't all have that. Uh, going for them. Now, I'm not saying everybody on death row is innocent, but right. what I am saying is that we don't know how many of them actually are. And that's really the big question is of, of, of those thousands of people who have perished at the hands of these executors in these uh, prisons, how many of them really didn't do what they were accused of doing? I mean, it's it's truly a horrifying I, I would say it's question. a sizable percentage. Yeah. And so, you know, I don't know what other, the rest of the evidence in the case was, but if 
I mean, it seems to me that if there was other evidence that this person committed the crime, they would have done everything they could have to have kept him in, in the prison cell, and the right. judge would sure, have decided yeah. to keep him there, but they decided that there wasn't enough evidence. So this guy is just, you know, it seems like he's probably just blaming this man because that's who the police fingered for the job, and he still believes what the police said, even though odds are good the police just found the nearest black guy with a gun and, uh, and set him up. Well, in Birmingham, Alabama, it's not difficult to find a black person. Right. Uh, the city is about 75 to 80 percent African-American, about 15 percent white. When a crime happens, what's important from the police's perspective is, you know, if they can't find who actually did it, to find someone they can make look like the, you know, did right. it. Because That's they want true. They want people to think Let's they're find a the guy that can't afford a lawyer. Yeah. They want people to think they're out there protecting them. And uh, the toll-free number is 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. You can take control of the airwaves. Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number. 1-855-905-MY-TV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. Say goodbye to the cable guy. And get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 1-855-905-MY-TV. Sign up for packages starting as low as $19.99 and there's no equipment to buy. You get free HD TV upgrade, a free DVR upgrade, and free professional and installation you control what you watch when you watch it record your favorite shows pause and rewind live tv even skip the commercials watch local channels too at just 19.99 what are you waiting for pull out your major credit or debit card call 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV say goodbye to the cable guy cut costs and get more 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV if you are successful at what you do, whether you're a doctor, a lawyer, a business owner, or you have a great career, you understand the concept of protecting yourself. Well, are you protecting yourself, your family, and your assets with quality term life insurance? Consider these possible rates. A man age 45, non-tobacco user, could obtain $1 million of coverage for as little as $75 a month. And this rate is fixed for the next 10 years. We specialize in policies of five. $500,000 and above. A man age 50, non-tobacco user, may be able to obtain $500,000 of coverage for as little as $115 a month. And this rate is fixed for the next 20 years. We have great rates for smokers, too. Call the Term Lifeline now. 800-872-0403. 800-872-0403. 800-872-0403. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons.
You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Free Talk Live, you dial toll-free if you like to join us here. 855-450-FREE is the number. You can also join us via Skype at Skype username LRN.FM. Joining you tonight in studio is Ian. Danica. And Daryl. Don't forget to check more Daryl out on his websites. He's got a couple. One, FPP.CC. Another, FPPRadio.com. For those of you who like some talk radio, some podcasts, what will they find at FPPRadio.com? They will find a Daily five-minute newscast at seven FPP, days a week. All seven days of the week at fppradio.com. There's also the thrice weekly uh, thirty-minute podcast, Peace, Love, Liberty Radio. And one thing that I do on that show is every Wednesday I do an Ask Me Anything. Was it Monday, Wednesday, Friday? Uh, it shows Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Okay. People can send the questions at any time. I will answer those on Wednesday. It can be anything. I've answered the question, how many licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Roll Tootsie Pop? Three. And no, no. No? That's how many it took Mr. Owl before he bit it. Scientists. A two. Three. Scientists (laughs) have actually tested to find out how many licks it would take without doing any biting. And if you focus I'm on one side, it takes about a hundred, or it takes about two hundred and fifty licks. Oh my! If you circle the whole way around, it can take between five hundred to a thousand, depending on how big your tongue is. So I've answered that. Was question. that a government grant to figure that out, or you know, probably because it was <laughs> you know various universities that studied it, and I've wow. also answered questions of the pros and cons of the death penalty. Excellent. So I will answer any question you send in. Which we've been talking about here tonight with the man released from death row after 30 years uh, with new, well, old evidence that was finally looked at in the right way yes. uh, that determined that he, in point of fact, did not murder the uh, fast food uh, manager. And was there more to share about that story, Daryl, or do we pretty much wrap that up? Uh, the story from USA Today is wrapped up, but I flipped over to the AL.com story and here's something that's interesting eight of the 194 inmates on death row in the state of alabama have been on death row longer than hinton was Mm. meaning that eight people have been on death row for over 30 years yeah and in my mind that really makes the death penalty cruel and unusual punishment Because you've got these people who are waiting. They know that they're going to be executed at some point. They're just waiting. But they're waiting and waiting. Well, in a lot of cases, there are appeals that are running during some of that time, right? Right. In some cases, there are. But in other cases, they're just waiting. Hmm. Remember, uh, Timothy McVeigh waived all of his appeals and was still on death row for like five years. Did they execute him? I don't even remember. Yeah, they executed him five years after he was convicted. Gotcha. After he waived all of his appeals because there's some kind of statute saying that it must be X number of time after the final appeal before you can execute the person. Well, why is it cruel and unusual if, uh, you know, if they have a death penalty at the end of their waiting, but waiting 30 years on a sentence, is, is that considered cruel and unusual to you? Like if you're sentenced to 30 years for something and, you know, then you get out. Well, I I don't know of any offense in my mind that would justify a 30-year sentence. What about a murder spree? Murder spree? And here's where I kind of waver on the uh, death penalty. Mm -hmm. I'm opposed to the government-run death penalty because it uses taxpayer money to kill people and that's you know obviously immoral because you're taking money by force to do things that people don't agree with there's that immorality of it and then there's also the immorality that you're killing innocent people too right right there's also that but if you know beyond a shadow of a doubt like you catch someone in the act or they admit to it or they said yeah i did it right beyond a shadow of let, a doubt. Let, let me finish my rant yeah. real quick if you catch someone in the act and someone goes vigilante justice, 
then that, in my mind, is completely justified. If I was on a sure. jury, I would not convict the vigilante for doing what he did as long as he knows beyond, I would say beyond 100% that he killed the guilty person. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm not opposed to murderers being killed. I'm opposed to taxpayer funding being used to kill murderers. Okay. So when I say it's cruel and unusual, justice is supposed to be swift, right? That, that's the whole the swift thing, hand of justice. The swift hand of ju- justice is supposed to be swift. If you wait 30 years to prosecute someone for stealing a candy bar when they were five, that would be cruel, unusual, and completely immoral. Sure, because that's not the same person anymore. Right. Yeah. So when you're executing someone 30 years later... It's not the same person Mm, anymore. Good point. Plus, you're making them wait. And that's doing a lot of mental damage to these people when they're waiting, not knowing, am I going to die today? Right. Am I going to die tomorrow? How much longer do I have to live waiting for someone to kill me? That's a that's a very good point, because I was just about to ask you, why are they keeping them here for 30 years? But you just answered it by mentally torturing them. Yeah, and it's of powerful. course, some of it is people are filing lawsuits. Some of the lawsuits are frivolous. Some of the lawsuits are completely justified. Like this, where the guy had his lawyer working for 16 years to try to get them to look at the bullets and see that the bullets did not match the gun. Not just didn't match his gun, but did not match the make of the gun. Mm. Other stories from uh, this one from NewsOK.com. Danica, you brought this one in. uh, In a bustling kitchen at the edge of the Plaza District in Oklahoma City, four men in aprons prepare an 18-course meal. They delicately slice quail eggs. What, 18 courses? a lot of courses. And fresh-baked pan bread. And lay eggplant and raw fish together in a small bowl, placing small bits of juniper on top with delicate precision. Two rooms away on a handmade wooden and metal table, one of them lays smooth wooden chopsticks on small pieces of reclaimed granite. While the group operates in a seemingly professional environment and their patrons sit among visually comforting surroundings, sitting underneath rustic branches that act as curtain rods and framed shots of stunning aerial photographs, this is not a restaurant in the traditional sense. It is a dinner club called Nani, and it operates out of the bottom floor of the very home of some of its staff. In February, the state health department issued Nani a cease and desist order, stating that its owners were operating without a license as a food establishment. The case is ongoing, pending an appeal hearing. Colin Stringer and Andon Whitehorn, Nani's owners and two of its three chefs, argue they are not a restaurant at all, rather a private dinner club, and have been operating as such since last summer. Stringer says, It's not like going out to dinner. It's an event. It's a very curated experience, and it's a very personal endeavor, he said. Nani does not take orders, nor does it advertise or accept walk-in customers. The meals are chosen by the chefs preparing them, and guests who make reservations are expected to try new foods, some locally forged, or foraged, and learn about what, uh, both what foods they're eating and the process by which they are made. So this is like a, a foodie club, right? This is a, the place for the fancy people that like the fancy right. It's food. An, it's an entertainment venue that they're providing. You know, they're they're the ones picking out the food. They're saying, "Here, we're going to serve you this eggplant with this slice of tuna mm-hmm. on top." And the eggplant came from this farm three miles away, and the tuna was locally harvested in this bay just a few miles down the road. These people are getting an educated experience while they're eating food for thought, if you will. The state health department has attempted to inspect Nani's facilities twice. Both times they were denied by its proprietors. Good move on their part, by the way. Absolutely. Not to let those bureaucrats in. The agency argues Nani is a restaurant and should be licensed as such. However, Stringer and Whitehorn, who are licensed as food managers with the state health department, say they are operating as private chefs, a stipulation made in the emails that they send confirming reservations and are inviting people to their home to try something new that they chose to make. Essentially, they say, we're throwing a little party every night. 
want to talk more about this here in a moment. Uh, the, uh, these are people who are doing things differently than the status quo, and the government doesn't know how to handle that, so they do what they always do, which is lash out with violence and the threats of it. 855-450 free if you've ever been to one of these dinner clubs. It's Free Talk Live. Well, I did it. I finally left the Empire behind. And now that I'm safely settled in Chile, I'm gathering with others like me to build a new community called Fort Galt. Fort Galt is designed to be the ideal home base for professionals and their families to live and work in peace. If you're ready to ditch the super state and bring your business to freer lands, visit us online at fortgalt.com. That's fortgalt.com. For over 20 years, you've trusted Lumber Liquidators to make high-quality, beautiful flooring affordable for everyone. Delivering this value means you get the floor you want at the low price you deserve. So we've lowered prices even more. This week, get stunning Espresso Hevea 3-quarter inch solid pre-finished hardwood for just $2.99 or natural strand bamboo for 41% less than our competitors and 18-month special financing. You trust our value, we value your trust. For quality hardwood, see the flooring experts. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. There's a man named Dr. Joel Wallach who is anything but your typical doctor, both a veterinarian and naturopathic physician. Doc asks, why does the United States spend more money on health care by far and still rank 50th in health and longevity worldwide? He believes that people should empower themselves with a basic understanding of nutrition, take charge of their health, and attain optimal health and longevity through nutrition, not by toxic prescription drugs that lead to side effects and more toxic prescription drugs. Drugs. Doc Wallach's message is resonating with an increasing number of Americans who are waking up to all the big government, big pharma, and big insurance manipulation of our health care system. I'm George Norrie, and I like what Doc Wallach is saying and doing to enlighten people about health care. Visit brightsideben.com and listen to Doc Wallach's Deadly Recipes lecture. It makes a lot of sense, and I urge you to join the Brightside Ben team. Go to brightsideben.com. That's brightsideben.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, you dial toll-free if you want. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Maybe you think there should be a crackdown on these dinner clubs, these damn foodies with all their fancy food, eating, drinking, and... Whatever. Fish on eggplant. How dare Talking, they? Talking, enjoying each other's company. 
learning about the the foods because I guess that's a big aspect of these foodie clubs is you know learning where the food came from and you know which farm and what do you put on this what's the right thing to mix with it etc so the dinner clubs here are are, are passing themselves off as an educational uh, social experience that is not a restaurant because they're not accepting the public you can't just walk in uh, and if you do get an invite to this dinner club, and the example they're giving is out of Oklahoma, the Oklahoma City area, but these things are happening in other places. We've talked about them in the past on Free Talk Live. It's actually been probably a couple few years since this issue has come up for discussion on the show. Um, but you know, the the uh, old guard does not like this. This is essentially the the Uber, if you will, uh, to some ways. It's a disruptive technology, a disruptive uh, development in the the realm of feeding people. Uh, and that and actually, they even reference Uber here in the interview from NewsOK.com. One of the People who's running this dinner club in Oklahoma City says, quote, it's a gray area the same way a lot of other popular models are gray areas right now. You have things like Uber, Airbnb. People question their legality, but what they're doing is cutting out the middleman. They're cutting out the traditional taxiing service. It's empowering the workers. You're basically letting the people do business amongst themselves. And uh, of course, he's right about that. Now, I don't know. Hold on. I, I didn't realize that there were legal questions about Airbnb. Oh, I bet there are. I mean, in a lot of places, they probably want to qualify them as hotels or something like that. So would those same legal questions apply to couchsurfing.org? Probably. Probably. I've got a couple of friends that use Airbnb, and they absolutely love it. I've not had the chance to use Airbnb, but I do plan on using it very soon. This is a way and, to find a place to crash, uh, but also more of a nicer place, right? It's not like a couch well, surfing thing. It's more of like it's a, a neat bed and experience. breakfast. It's people that run bed and breakfast out of their homes. Well, not necessarily bed and breakfast because... The, That's what B and B stands for. I realize, bed and breakfast. I, I realize that, but it's not not all so places breakfast that is are not gonna, included. It's on, not always included. Okay, so bed and that, or breakfast. Well, if you would allow me to actually finish, <laughs> then I could explain. So people can rent out their entire apartment or houses or a private room, mm -hmm. and it can be a really neat way to see the area or the city or wherever you're in from a local's perspective. If you think about right. it, I have friends that recently took a trip to Ireland and they're staying in a little cottage. They've got the entire place themselves. They get to see the countryside. And instead of at the Marriott, instead where you're of the Marriott, 14 stories yeah. up and, or something. And sometimes the host will do things just out of being nice people. Like sometimes they'll have a nice breakfast free of charge. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they'll bring an umbrella for the travelers if it's going to be raining out. Sometimes they'll even go out of their way to pick you up from the airport or give you a personalized wow. tour. It's just, it's really intricate. It's really intimate. It's a really cool way. And very intimate, you were saying. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, oh. and very intricate on how they can see just the viewpoints of these different people in these areas. And what's also really cool is that, like I said, they can sometimes offer tour guides with that mm -hmm. and they can help show them around. And it is also usually cheaper than spending oh, 100, 200 a, at a hotel. And obviously the bigger the place better is, service and cheaper. better service, yeah. you know, depending on where you're at and how much you're renting out, it couldn't be higher or lower, but it's a really cool idea to see it from the different hmm. locals' perspectives. For now, Stringer and Whitehorn say until a legal outcome is reached, Nani, which is their dinner club, uh, will continue to take reservations. Tony Seller, spokesman for the state health department, admits there are no laws in Oklahoma regulating private chefs, but he said what Nani is doing simply is not legal. Quote, there must be a complete separation between the food service activities and the residential activities. You could live in the back of whatever it is, but there has to be a clear separation where there's not people coming in and out, sitting on the couch, watching TV or whatever. Does this strike you as ridiculous as it does to me? So... They want their hand in it. That's just that, all that is. That there's no regulations in Oklahoma against private chefs. Right. But you can't have someone sitting on your couch watching television while or they're whatever. eating. So <laughs> basically, it's illegal to invite your neighbors over for a barbecue to watch the football game. If they're paying for it, it's illegal. Okay. So asking the I'm bringing the beer. You're cooking the burgers. I'm compensating you for the burgers with beer, Don't so therefore ideas. illegal? 
you know what? It depends on how you interpret it. There may be some bureaucrat who would say, yes, that would be illegal. Uh, let me go yeah, on better here. not say that too loud, Daryl. You might get in trouble. Gosh. If they continue operating past the 15-day period allowed for an appeal after the cease and desist order was filed, Stringer and Whitehorn face a $250 per day fine. Whitehorn says it's uh, nothing but the money at this point. They've realized they don't have regulations for this. Bottom line is I just think they're trying to fill their fee, uh, their fee schedule, and that's exactly what this is. Unquote. The two say they want to be in compliance with the law, but after repeated attempts to get clarification from the state health department on either how they differ from private chefs or what options exist for them to continue operating, they've been met with a wall of silence. Gee, do you think that's because the state's actually not interested in bringing them into compliance or, you know, having some sort of set of rules for them because what they're doing is just too different, it's too radical, it's too much of a threat to the status quo, and so they'll just, you know, rather than tell them how to obey, they'll just not tell them anything. This reminds me of the lemonade liberation thing that happened several years ago down in Washington, D.C., to where Meg McLean and a couple other people wound up getting arrested That's right. for vending on Capitol Hill grounds without a permit. However, Park Police will not give anyone a permit to vend on Capitol Hill grounds. Mm -hmm. So they got arrested for not having a permit that doesn't exist. Ultimately, their charges were, were dropped. dropped after they decided to fight it instead of just paying the fine. But it's still one of those things of they'll make it up, As and yeah. if you don't fight it, they'll get away with it. The state health department declined to comment on the specifics of Nani's case, citing pending litigation. Of course, they... Attor yeah. Attorney representing Nani, Rebecca J. King, says they've never been given any guidance as to how to comply with the law. Nani's business model says the story here at NewsOK.com does not fall under the legal requirements for operating a restaurant, said their attorney, and the case is unprecedented in Oklahoma. A new and As new and unique businesses grow along with the state's changing culture and businesses, new problems will need to be addressed. She says, quote, Oklahoma is going through some growing pains and it's exciting to see these new things, but there is some old administrative code that doesn't really match with business models today. And it's not their intention to have the code match with business models of today. Disorderly conduct and resisting arrest. Is, are you saying they should charge them with that? That That's probably, you know, just show up to the restaurant that's not a restaurant and, oh, well, you're not letting us in? Well, okay, now you're under arrest. Disorderly conduct, resisting arrest. Throw them in jail. And then ultimately the dinner club has to shut down because they're not there to cook and fulfill reservations. That's how they can shut down. I think what these guys are doing is is good business. I think it's an interesting model, and I think they should be uh, appreciated rather than targeted and shut down. Of course, but, but we know that the cops want to shut them down. Right. They want to shut them down because the restaurateurs in town are the ones likely who are on the board of regulation for restaurants, and they don't want to just make it so anybody can just start serving food out of their own kitchen. That's why they say that they're or supposed to be— all these restaurants are paying all these crazy taxes and all these fees, right. so why shouldn't these private chefs also have— to pitch in for that that is exactly what the mindset is it's the slave on slave mentality of well we've been abused and so everybody else needs to be abused as well oh, or you can't feed people when we were at the uh hearing on removing the uh concealed carry permit there is some lady that testified i'm a beautician i've got to have a permit to do that right. why shouldn't people have and so I got up and testified just a couple people later and was like, well, yeah, you shouldn't have to have a permit to cut people's hair. Right, lady. Why don't you just cut some hair like a free person would cut some hair? Or go talk to the other uh, committees and say, hey, can you guys repeal this regulation because it's really hurting business? But the argument It's would, costing me a lot of extra money. The strongest argument the state would make, and they didn't argue it in this case, uh, but the strongest argument would be that, well— Disease. I mean, foodborne illness. I mean, you've got to protect people, and restaurants have to go through certification. And, uh, you know, this is you just somebody's kitchen. You can still get food poisoning from a restaurant that has certification. It's true. You can. But that's the argument, right? That's right. the best argument is that they're certified. Well, there's no reason why these chefs can't be serve safe certified or whatever, like these right. guys operating in their own home kitchen. And I doubt serve safe really cares as to whether or not there's a couch in the other room uh, and a TV. 
I mean, these are just arbitrary rules set up by government to force people into buying and paying rent on expensive business properties where there's a tremendous level of overhead that keeps people out of business. Don't a lot of clubs have couches? That's so right. if they don't want people sitting on couches, then shut down all the clubs. I know, shut well, down the all the club, nightclubs. The club kitchen is separated from the, the couch area. Dad, so is my kitchen. We're uh, out of time for tonight. <laughs> Back tomorrow. Online in the meantime at freetalklive.com. Check out Daryl's site, fppradio.com. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year's keynote speeches and panels will be announced via the Keenvention blog and Facebook, so stay tuned there for the latest. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenvention this October 30th through November 1st. Tickets are available now at a special early bird price of just $50 via credit card or Bitcoin. That $50 price only lasts through the end of June, so don't delay. Reserve your tickets now at keenvention.info. Visit keenvention.info for more and look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nestle Tollhouse Morsels, helping you create special moments and memories your family will cherish forever. Visit us at tollhouse.com. You may bake for birthdays and holidays, but why stop there? Sweeten up the rest of the year by designating monthly dessert days. Treat your family to one of their favorites or surprise them with something new. Either way, you'll create a tradition everyone will love. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. The latest episode of The Corey Moore Show is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, April 3rd, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.78 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,200 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $254. Antiwar.com reports a groundbreaking framework agreement yesterday between the international community and Iran has caused most to breathe a sigh of relief as it seemingly forestalls the calls for hawks nonstop for decades to attack Iran. But has the war been prevented? Not necessarily. Israeli officials griping about the deal even before it was made have dialed up that criticism more and having failed to sabotage the negotiations through lobbying the US Congress, they may look to veto the deal by starting a war and assuming everyone will back them. Israeli intelligence minister Yuval Steinitz is talking up that option in particular, saying Israel may have no choice but to use the military option to counter the threat of the deal. Steinitz bragged that the 1981 Israeli attack on a nuclear reactor in Iraq was done entirely without U.S. permission or cooperation, saying U.S. efforts at diplomacy would not have stopped an Israeli war. Even the U.S. is not immune to that sort of warmongering talk with Defense Secretary Ash Carter declaring just days ago that the U.S. could sign a final deal with Iran and then attack them anyhow if it thought it would benefit them. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. 
UPI reports a Texas Department of Public Safety trooper said he was reprimanded for posing for a picture with Snoop Dogg that was posted on the rapper's Instagram. Ty Clevenger, an attorney for DPS trooper Billy Spears, said Snoop Dogg asked to take a photo with his client while he was working security at the South by Southwest Music Festival in Austin. The rapper then posted the picture on Instagram with the caption, Me and my deputy dog. Clevenger said DPS superiors reprimanded Spears and ordered him to receive counsel after the photo, which was taken by the rapper's publicist, was brought to their attention. The DPS order read, While working a secondary employment job, Trooper Spears took a photo with a public figure who has a well-known criminal background, including numerous drug charges. The public figure posted the photo on social media, and it reflects poorly on the agency. Clevenger said his client has no means of appealing because the counseling does not constitute formal discipline by the agency. However, he said the reprimand will appear on Spears' personal personnel record. The lawyer also said Spears was unaware that Snoop Dogg had drug convictions. You can support FPP Radio by shopping online. Whether you're looking for t-shirts, precious metals, bitcoins, or books, you'll find that and more at shop.fppradio.com. There's an Amazon shopping iframe built into the website, or you can shop directly from FPP with Bitcoin in the Bitcoin store. Every purchase you make from one of my affiliates at shop.fppradio.com helps fund FPP Radio. That's shop.fppradio.com. Reuters reports Brent oil fell nearly 4% on Thursday after a preliminary pact between Iran and Global Powers on Tehran's nuclear program, even as officials set talks in June and analysts questioned when the OPEC members will be allowed to export more crude. Traders had been fixated on the talks held in Switzerland for a week as Iran tried to agree with six world powers on concessions to its nuclear program to remove U.S.-led sanctions that have halved its oil exports. The sanctions against Iran will come off under a future comprehensive deal to be agreed by June 30th after it complies with nuclear-related provisions. Phil Flynn, analyst at Price Futures Group in Chicago, said, If nothing is going to be signed until June, something could go wrong between now and then. North Sea Brent crude futures, the most widely used global benchmark for oil, settled down $2.15 or 3.8% at $54.95 a barrel. U.S. crude futures settled down $0.95 cents or 2% at $49.14 a barrel after falling $2 earlier in the day. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. On May 22, 1992, beloved talk show host Johnny Carson ended his 30-year run of hosting The Tonight Show with a farewell episode that included special guests Saddam Hussein, KKK Grand Wizard Virgil E. Griffin, and a musical performance by The Flag. On May 24, 1883, the Brooklyn Bridge opened, providing New Yorkers with a more efficient way of killing themselves and escaping their trash-ridden excrement cake city. The monument